It has been a long season of civil war. Rebel teams striking from various bases won their first victories in the dog days of summer. As these punishing battles stretched through the fall, home teams heroically defended their turf. Some stood, some fell. Now, the strongest warriors congregate in an arena that makes the showdown at Geonosis look like an Ewok picnic. I told you we should have taken a right at Tatooine, not a left. I find your lack of faith disturbing. How the heck am I supposed to wear a headset with these things? <laughs> Laugh it up, fuzzball. We're going to be late for the Quad A Championship, unless Mr. Cranky Pants here steps on it. Warp speed fast enough for you, Mr. Smarty. Help me, Obi-Wan. You're our only hope. Just use the force and park in the gold lot already. Look, I don't tell you which fire hydrants to use. You don't tell me how to drive. Now, let the game begin. <laughs> I said, park in the gold lot. What part of gold lot do you not understand? The Cartersville Purple Hurricanes versus the Buford Wolves. Next. May the force be with us all this weekend at the 2015 Tommy Gillibo GHSA Football Championships inside the Georgia Dome. Thanks to our friends at Georgia EMC for helping light the way in green. Under the big top, it is a battle of number one versus number two. Two teams at 13 and one. Cartersville coming in out of region seven. Buford coming in out of region number eight. The Quad A Championship, championship six of seven right here on GPB. Alongside Dr. Rush, go ahead and get it out of the way. Go ahead and talk about the I Open. I can't believe Steve Graham Darth put Harmon. Mark Harmon in that little baby mask. Hey, At hey. least get a mask that's going to fit his face. Uh, was see? that Obi or was that Graham with the long hair? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Alongside pretty, uh, Dr. Rush, I sorry, hold no sorry, such pedigree. Sorry, Mark Harmon. I am Harmon. just John, and it is a battle of number one and number two. Cartersville and Buford, if you filled out your brackets, this is pretty much what everybody thought was going to happen here for the last day of the regular season inside the Georgia Dome and Buford you run out of adjectives Chuck when you talk about the Wolves go ahead and put the graphics up and what they've done since the year 2000 they put it all on one page that's a lot of small print well you're going for your 12th straight they're phenomenal and the best way to describe this program with Jess Simpson they're winners they win championships they put the players out a lot of big numbers on the left a lot of small numbers on the right they would be the first team ever to do two four peats on a run mm. and speaking of run there's a guy named Mangrum who's going to be getting the rock a lot today well he's fantastic and you know he has power he runs with speed efficiency but what you're going to see today is old school football from Buford Mangrum's going to run power, power, power. They're going to run and see if they can break this Cartersville defense. And I think you'll have the GoPro off his helmet by the time they <laughs> kick off. On the flip side on defense, you said in the pregame that it was going to be about defense. Shug Mountain. I love that big old boy, Shug Mountain. Now, let me tell you why. He is big. He's a wide body. The way to compare him, you know, this GPB TV trucks that we got out back? Right. His backside is big like them big trucks, and he's a road <laughs> grader. He clogs it up, and he is going to be a factor today. That is number two. They had 42 games in a row snapped. Their one loss was to McEachern to the flip side. The top ranked Cartersville Purple Hurricanes trying to chase after something since 1999 and they have put up a lot of offensive numbers. Let's talk about one of the big targets that the quarterback has had in Miller Forrestal. Well, Miller Forrestal is phenomenal. He's an Alabama commit, but what makes him special? He goes and gets the ball and, I, and now his mentality is, as you can see here, when the ball is up in the air, 
is mine. He's a fantastic player. I'm excited to watch him play. Think Rob Gronkowski, 6'5", on the edge. Mm. They will spring Forrestal out wide, and the guy throwing it to him, the top-ranked sophomore quarterback in the nation. Well, we love Trevor Lawrence. He's phenomenal. He's a great pocket passer. He manages the, manages the game. He does everything you look for, and he throws with accuracy. He's going to have to be efficient today if they're going to beat Buford. Completes two out of every three of his passes, a lot of touchdowns, about a 10 to 1 TD to interception ratio. And we had talked about history and how that winning streak was in the 40s. It got stopped early on this season. So here's how Buford got to this point in time. You talked with Jess Simpson. He's the guy right there. Jess Simpson has been a part. And I'm going to go ahead and use the D word, dynasty, when it comes to Georgia high school football. Jess Simpson, that win-loss record, that is not a typo. We can say that. He'd never say that. I mean, it's a dynasty, and there's argument right now. There's debate. Where does he fit as the all-time greatest coaches in Georgia sports history? He's in, the, he's in the conversation. Two of those losses were by forfeit. Ten of his career losses were one year at East Paulding. So he has lost in the single digits at Buford. On the flip side, there's Joey King, lost in the semifinal last year to Buford, 27-3 at Weinman Stadium. In his second season, came over from Carrollton as one of the coordinators, 26-2 for the Purple Hurricanes as they come. Frank Barton and the staff won in 1999. Cartersville trying to duplicate the task today. And if you like passing and you like pass defense, that's going to be stage one. You're going to see a lot of it with Cartersville. And the trenches, they're going to be your friend today, Dr. Rush. <laughs> You're right. And you talked about the trenches. Pass rush is going to show up today. I'm excited about that. We're going to talk some pass rush because the key for Buford will be, can you affect Trevor Lawrence at quarterback? That's going to be a big key. And Buford won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. And you ready for some ball, Nelly? Number one versus number two in oh, yeah. quad A. If you are the last person in Cartersville driving down to catch a second half, please turn out the lights because I think all of your friends and family are here to put into football. And this will get returned from the five. Trying to come near side. Finds a hole, 20 out to the 24-yard line, and that's where Cartersville will start on offense. 19 yards on the return by Trace Fize. And there's Trevor Lawrence. You saw the numbers. 67% completions, just under 3,500 yards. 42 and 4. The touchdown to interception ratio. Started as a freshman last season at about the halfway point. Miller Forrestal, the prime target at 6'5. He was the quarterback last year. Then they called for a change. Trevor Lawrence is now the quarterback for the Purple Hurricane. It was a really unselfish move last year by Forrestal to move positions to help the team. Bad snap off the top, falls on it, big loss. So take another look, Matthew Parker gets credit for the tackle. Here's the snap, though. Just a low snap, center, just a low snap by the center. Just got to get the ball up, you know, a little bit of jitters, you know, got to get warmed up, but it happens a lot of time. But the key is getting back into what you do well. Just interesting start. Got to have good snaps today, though. Got to have good snaps. Loss of 11, first play out of the blocks. So let's see what Lawrence will do now. A lot of time, a lot of protection. Looks like he's going to come near side the screen. But two guys cut the corner off, and he's out at the 14. No gain, third down. Let's take a look at your Cartersville offense, brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Robertson, Garrett Cook, Cam Cheek, Bryce Wilkins, and Nick Root tackle the tackle. Skill positions, Callahan, Tony Dean, Time, and Pennyman. Forrestal, we talked about him in the open at 6'5", a big target. Antoine Jefferson at 5'8". Will run split in. Good protection on that first pass by Cartersville's O-line. You're going to see this a lot. Once checking off, get your play. See what they do on third down, something safe. Incomplete. Trying to throw a screen there, slipped out. Snipped out by Caleb Auer, trying to get the screen to time in Pennyman. Joey King gets a quick three and out. Caleb Auer has had a heck of a year so far. Trevor Lawrence is trying to set up a screen, catch Buford being aggressive. Nice job by Buford in his first series. Gabe Gridley back to punt. 
Let's see what Buford can do. You gotta cover here. Championship games, the special teams will be at a premium. Short snap, punt does not turn over. Fair catch called for about the 45 yard line, and that's where Buford will start on offense. 41 yard punt, fair catch. Well, I expect Buford to be Buford to come out and fully establish the run, but it wouldn't surprise me, as we always talk about, anytime you get the ball close to the 50, sometimes a lot of coaches, and I know Jess, sometimes you might just think about taking a shot, but they are going to be a run effective team if they're going to win today. They have to run the ball to be effective. There's Mick Roof, completes about 53% of his passes, 99 out of 144, about 4 to 1 on his TD to interception ratio. And the last name, yes, it is of the Roofs. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, a lot of folks new here on the flats in the state. As Mick and TD on the roster. Let's take a look at your Buford offense brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. Tackle to tackle, 265, 290, 270, 265 at Cooper Simpson, one of the coach's sons that's on the roster, Tyler Thurman at 275. Bussoletti, Xavier Gant, Martin Mangrum, we talked about him in the open, Brandon Marsh. Caleb Hour, and there is one of the two Simpson sons. There's Cooper, he's the senior. <laughs> Trying to clear the way, Cartersville's defense steps up early. Let's take a look at the Cartersville defense. Brandon Wade, Torian Scrutchins, Darren Polnitz, the 227 off the edge. Davis, you're gonna see some players playing both ways, like Pennyman, Tyler Reed, and Sean Holton. Secondary, keep an eye on Kramer, Playmaker at six foot, Kobe Whitfield at 6'1", Xavier Coxum, and Trez Fize at 5'10", is the other corner. Gain of three, whistles, and flags. <laughs> Buford was going long on that one. They were going long on that one. Here's a look at your officials. Bruce Austin will be wearing the mic. Big Mike Gammons is your umpire. There's the rest of the crew from the All-Star Football Officials Association. So we'll be hearing a lot of Bruce Austin today. He'll be on the mic. Five-yard penalty moves him back. It'll be third down and 12. First time out of the blocks for the Wolves. Let's see what they come up with here. So it'll be something controlled, right guard and tackle, maybe two. So Cartersville's defense steps up big in their first third down opportunity. Let's take another look. Kobe Whitfield in on the tackle. Excellent job by Cartersville. You trying to run in between the tackles. Couldn't do it. Nice wall, nice start by Cartersville. Both defenses have stepped up early. Gang tackling, five Purple Hurricanes. Putting the football end over end. This one doesn't turn over either. Wedge checks up at about the 25 yard line. So Cardinals will get their second chance. 29 yard punt, no return. And it's time to do your investigating through social media. Our Wookiee of the Year, Chewbacca, was not allowed in the dome this weekend, so he is at these coordinates for this particular ball game. 41-42. North Dutchin. 44-47. Ball be spotted right here. First TV down. Sports. You have to use the hashtag Chewy Unleashed to be thrown into the hat for the opportunity to win an iPad Mini, and you have to do city and state or nation and city if it is outside the continuous 48. At GBB Sports, hashtag Chewy Unleashed, hashtag Dome Wars this weekend. Second time out of the box for Carter's the screen maybe got two. Once again, gang tackling in there by Buford, right on the edge. TD Roof part of it. Joshua Blackwell a part of it as well. Number nine, you see him right there, the junior. He'll play both ways. He'll get some time at tailback and on defense. I like the wrinkle right now that you're seeing from Cartersville, up tempo. What they're trying to do is not let Buford substitute. They're trying to go up tempo, passing the ball, limiting Buford's substitution. Being sealed in a hurry out to the 30, maybe two, so third down and five. Big Shook Frazier does a good job. Clogs up the middle. 
They're trying to where well, they're trying to go is right in here. They're trying to go right in here. Not going to happen. Not on that play. Anytime you see Shug able to get off the block right there, you have to control the middle. You have to control Shook Frazier if you're going to run the ball, but they're going to have to at least try the run to keep establishing the pass. You can't just throw out the run. You've got to be able to run the pass. 315 yards on the nose for Buford. Roll out over the top complete. Out to the 38, gets the first down, move the sticks, and there's your 6-5 thrower to the 6-5 target. Nice job by Trevor Lawrence getting out of the pocket. Look at, look at the touch. We talked about his accuracy. This is just great touch. Throwing against his throwing motion, throwing against his right arm, going to the left. That's why he's who he is. Playmaker. Spread them out here pretty good. Two by two. Run back behind. Big run by Trey Kramer into Buford territory, but let's see what the laundry's all about. Gain of 19. And let's we'll see if it sticks. Cartersville did a good job on that play, establishing, controlling the middle. We got an illegal formation. Not enough for the line of scrimmage. Five yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Three plays, first down. You got to have a certain number on the line of scrimmage. Cartersville did not. Seven, you have to have seven football players on the line to make a legal formation. It's got to be seven. And so, it looked like with the two by two yeah. mm -hmm. that there were only six. Right. So instead of a gain of 19, it's minus five. It'll be first down 15. Five minutes gone here in the first quarter. Cartersville and Buford quad A championship here at the Georgia Dome in a battle of number one and number two. Protection right. That's where Lawrence Wolf looking. Almost intercepted, batted down very quickly by Xavier Gant. Let's take a look at the Buford defense. Once again, brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. We talked about Shook Mountain in the middle at 315. Cooper Simpson playing both ways. Matthew Parker, TD Roof. Jake Simpson, the other Simpson son, 6'2", 200, one of the linebackers. Your secondary, Blackwell, Walker, Martin, and Xavier Gant. Well, it looks like on the play, he threw a ball. Trevor threw it behind the receiver. We got pass bit. interference on the defense. 15 yards. Was up to the first well, it looks first like down. the defensive back was trying to make a play on the ball. Trevor got the benefit. It looks like he throws it behind him a little bit. Defensive back trying to make a play. Got the call. So the pass interference penalty moves it up to the 48. Cartersville will regroup. First down. Little end around, halfback pass. Does it have enough or is too much? Antoine Jefferson winding up. Buford got away with one that time. There was a hold. He was held that time. He was held on that one. If you see the replay, look at the high look here. Right up top. Right here. Watch this. He's going to be held. He got away with one this time. Buford got a break. There's your group, and they'll go by. Yep. Got a little jersey there. And incomplete. Second down and 10 off of the long incompletion by Antoine Jefferson. End around halfback option. Lawrence dropping, looking, locked in, batted into the air, incomplete. Looking for Antoine Jefferson that time. He was double covered. You know, right now, Cartersville is doing a, a fantastic job on Shook Frazier in the Buford defensive line. Got a lot of time, but what you see when you rush three, there's eight in coverage on Buford. So Trevor Lawrence is having problems right now finding all the little pockets to find his receiver. It's going to be interesting, this chess match that goes back and forth between these two teams. Third down and 10 for Cartersville. They're playing coverage here. You know what I'm yep. Once again. Going to move him five yards back. On the offense, five yards. Ball we play third this down. Time. So we'll go third and 15. Buford's playing coverage. Buford is playing cover three. They're dropping eight back 
saying we're not going to give up the deep ball. You're going to have to, you're going to have to find something short. They're forcing them to throw short right now. They Trevor Lawrence. Yep, yep. They don't. It's because if they blitz, it makes great quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence a lot more effective. It's a smart start. Smart start for Buford defensively. Two by two protection for Lawrence on third down and 15. Thought he had an opening up the middle off the quarterback draw. Got it maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Carterville, Cartersville will have to punt. Jake Simpson, number 17, right there in on the tackle. Playing field position here. That's what's going on now with the Purple Hurricanes. Joey King's playing smart. Hey, let's live the fight again. Let's just fill this thing out. Remember, it's a chess match. Filling each other out to see how you can make adjustments down the line. Because right now, Buford, they've come out with a three man front. Last year, when we were in Cartersville, they're a four man front the entire game, basically. So, so far, punching count of punch almost. Oh. Contact with Gabe Gridley, picked up at the 15, but we got to figure out if the flag's going to be 5 or 15 yards. Tackle made at the 21. And we got to sort out the flag back at the 35. 42 yard punt, 5 yard return, and Gabe Gridley is not getting up. Buford close to a block. Yeah, no acting skills needed here. <laughs> right into it and undercut him. Hopefully the young man's okay. That was a. We got a personal a foul. Roughing the kicker on the defense. 15 yards. Automatic. First down. And this is the same thing that happened in the semifinal that we aired last year on Football Fridays. A lot of penalties early on, and that's not a good sign for Cartersville. A lot of the kids, you get ants in your pants. You get out here, it's a big game, bright lights. You got to be able to manage your emotions. And anytime you play in a championship situation, you got to be resilient. You, you know there are other teams are going to make plays, but it's how you respond. This is a, the first real test right now for the Buford defense. If Gridley's unable to continue, that would mean the punting duties go to Aiden Durbano. Number 75, a 6'2", 230-pound offensive lineman. Listed on the depth chart as their backup punter. We'll keep an eye on that injury as we go. Trevor Lawrence with another opportunity for the Cartersville offense. Pennyman gets maybe two. Established the outside zone. Pennyman, there's no room to run. No room to run. They're running to set up that play action, but you get, we, we've talked about again a philosophy. I believe you run for toughness. You're going to throw for points to go downfield. There you go. You see what they're doing on Gridley, and they're looking right at the intersection where the ankle bone hits the instep. Keep an eye on that. Take the handoff, incomplete on the pass. Trying to get Forrestall in the middle. Solid defense again there by Buford. R.J. Walker with the deflection incomplete. There's nowhere to throw right now for Trevor Lawrence. Great scheme right now by Buford. They, they've got literally eight of their guys in the box until Cartersville hits that long ball. They're not going to back up because they don't believe that this Cartersville team can run the ball on them. So they're going to try to stop the run with three and cover with and, and cover with eight. Third down. Eight and a half or nine. Lawrence looking, trying to get rid of it. He does, throws off his back foot out of bounds, incomplete, just throwing it away. So let's see what Cartersville does here for punting on fourth and eight from the 41. Well, I'll give Buford a lot of credit. Last year they were four man. They were coming with five man pressure. Last year they've come out with an entire different wrinkle versus this Cartersville team. Number 17, Jonathan Cruz is in. And he will be punting. Goal is inside the 10. So let's see what the 5'9 sophomore can do. End over end. And it looks like it's going to check off at the 5 yard line. 36 yard punt from the 9th grader, from the 10th grader. And we're going to take a break off the change of possession. Number one versus number two here in Quad A. Cartersville and Buford are scoreless. We'll let you know what else is going to happen. The GHSA Championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. 
Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome, 4.45 to go for the first quarter. Cartersville and Buford are scoreless in the battle of number one versus number two here to determine the Quad A championship. We've had two championships already decided today. Eagles Landing Christian in single A private beating Aquinas. And the game before this one, as you see them working on Gabe Gridley, they've gone straight to the ice pack against that ankle bone. Game before this one, Pace Academy. And I know you wanted to do a shout out to a fellow NFLer. Oh, I'm so proud of Chris Slade, a good friend of mine at Pace Academy. We played the senior ball together, played in the NFL. He was a pass rusher. Congratulations bringing that first ever title to the community at Pace Academy. Congrats, guys. And after this one, number one versus number two in 6A. The entire town of Moultrie, the entire county of Parkwood will be here. You will see a lot of black going up against the Roswell Hornets in the battle of number one versus number two. Gain of two. Xavier Gant gets two yards there and in on the tackle. Darian Polnitz, number 41. we are seeing a lot of him on defense today. Polnitz, 227 pound down lineman. I know that hashtag Dr. Rush is going to keep an eye on everything in the trenches today. They got my eyes on it. They gave Gant two. Hand off to the tail one more time. White the jerseys there for no gain. Tyler Reed does a great job scraping. Comes down the line of scrimmage. That's what you're looking for. These last two plays, I'll tell you this. I like what Cartersville's doing. They're, they're physically more aggressive and they're physically tackling better this year against this Buford team. I mean, I can just see a lot. The difference between the year makes when you're motivated against a guy, a team that's beat you a lot. Everything's going to be that much better for you to try to win. So when you use the word scraping, what are you what are you talking about? He's coming that he's coming right downhill off the butt of his uh, off the defensive line, he's scraping right to the ball. And a right up the middle and a big hole, 25 tackled at the 34 yard line. Big gain that time for TD Roof, gain of 26. Well, that's the first big run over 10 yards that they had, and what you see, TD Roof. They're going to take coming here. They're trying to come inside here, guys. This lane in between here is where they're trying to run. TD Roof runs off tackle. He cuts it back. That's where they're trying to hit exactly where that seam is. So he has the option to stay inside or bounce it out on that inside dive. And he knew he got more than a first down off of that one with the game of 26. Out of the 34 gives Buford some breathing room. And the wall, easy pitch and catch, 35-40 to the 41 yard line that time. Reed Parks with the catch. We'll just call that the Whirly Bird screen. Like a B button screen? <laughs> too, too much to try to figure out. Whirly Dervish is out. This is a basic screen pass misdirection to try to get Cartersville thinking you're going left and they're going to the right. It's good work. You saw number 11, the quarterback, Mick Roof, fake to the left, roll back to the right to go with his body for that easy throw, a safe throw. For Buford, gain of seven. Maybe a loss of a yard there. Once again, Cartersville very stingy de defensively. Martin Mangrum maybe gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Austin Davis stepping up. All the guys stepping up here. Cartersville, they're doing a good job so far. Nikita, Cartersville success today. Stop the run. Put Mick Roof in long passing situations. This is exactly where Buford likes to be, though. Short yardage. Third and manageable. Third and three. You see a power set. Wing down low. Hand off. Pops to the second level. First down. Xavier Gant takes it out to the 46-yard line. And Buford will start it all over again. This kid is fantastic. Power play right off the right side. Counter OG, they bring the backside guard, does a great job blocking. Gant's going to be a nice player for Georgia Tech. 
nice player for Georgia Tech. Power football though. Cartersville's got to keep those pads down, keep those legs moving. New set of downs, 90 seconds to go for the first quarter here in the Quad A title game. And great pursuit from the back side by Cartersville for the big loss. Tried to do jet sweep with Christian Turner. Tor and it didn't Torian happen. Scrutchings. Sean Holton, Scrutchings, all involved in this play. Here's another look. 32 does a great job. We talked about scraping. Anytime you get you have a zone blocking team, zone means they want to go sideways. The offensive lineman, good job by Cartersville scraping to the ball. That's going to be really important for them today. They're getting it done right now. There's Sean Holton. Loss of seven. End up for Cartersville. Puts five on the line, seven in the box. Roof rolling out. Big pressure and sack. And a flag at the end of the play. Austin Davis gets the sack, but let's see what happens with the flag. Did he get his face mask? I couldn't tell if he got his neck around the collar. Carterville's getting to the ball now. They're swarming to the ball. And Bruce Austin, let's see what he says. Personal foul, force call. On the defense, that's 15 yard penalty replay, second down. Horse collar. Let's take another look at it. Now, call, go, go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, they call a horse collar here. Take Let's it see it as we get close up. There's the hand. Does a good job, half roll. And the grab going backwards. Yep, that wasn't a horse collar. Got to move on to the next play, though. Up to the 49, so it's from the spot of the foul. Makes it a second down and seven. High set for Buford. Closing ranks. Handoff, big hole up to the 42 and a first down. Gain of seven. There's Gant again. You're going to see a lot of that 34 wham, whatever you want to call it, with that two back. One of the offensive linemen down for Buford. It's Tyler Thurman, 6'5", 275 pound, at the right tackle. He's a junior. And looking at that left knee. Well, Buford, you can't ever afford to lose a starter. This team is built on power, particularly when you have a young quarterback or a quarterback back there for the first time in McRoof. I mean, sorry, Mick Simpson. Checking, checking range of motion. That's a good start. He's up on his feet. And you want the big guys up front when you got a kid up there that's really just. This team's about running the ball. You want to protect Mick Roof. You want to need all your offensive linemen in there. We'll keep an eye on that injury as well. He's all right. Yeah, he'll be back next play. Give him two plays. Spit on it. Come on back on the field. So what'd you say that he was? <laughs> He's what, 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 what was that line, adjective? Offensive linemen are men too. Offensive linemen are people. Muddle huddle. Let's uh -oh. see what happens here. Interesting formation for a quick set into the quarter. So they had an idea and they just ran out of time. The last 11 seconds once Thurman cleared the field. And that'll do it for the first 12 minutes. Number one versus number two in quad A. And nothing is resolved after the first 12. Cartersville, Buford, scoreless. The Quad A title on the balance right here on the great GPB. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, Supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs. Powering our businesses. Lighting the way. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.com. 
Edu. The GHSA Football Championship games continue all day, right here, only on GPB. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Welcome back to the 2015 Tommy Gillibo GHSA Football Championships here on the great GPB. Scoreless after the first 12 minutes, we welcome the third member of our broadcast team, Sam Crenshaw. What's the early word? I don't have that job to check here on the sideline getting set to watch the second quarter of this game. Before the game, we're in the locker room because Joey King of Cartersville, this is what he had to say to the Purple Hurricanes. You need to be passionate about it. You need to play with that fire from deep inside. Instead of acting like, oh, we've been here before and this and that, and being a little overconfident, you play with your dog on guts in your heart that got you here, and we'll be all right. Stay That's Coach. He's got him ready to go out and play. He's got me ready. I don't know about you two. Back up, Sam's year. Line up, Sammy. Sammy, I know you fired up, got your goosebumps. <laughs> that was great. Hey, I, I, I'm, I could not be happier to have two guys in the trenches. I got hashtag Dr. Rush, and I got Sam as leading blockers down there. I love having Sam on my team now. Come on. Joey King. Baller. Came from Carrollton. Quarterback at Cedartown. So he's been entrenched in Northwest Georgia football for a while. And you see the plays, even number of plays, yardage, not even. Start of the second quarter. Buford tried the muddle huddle again, but they wanted to do it at the end of the first quarter. Let's see what Nick Roof has with two backs behind him. Handoff. Gant. Not much. Trying to find some running room. Xavier Gant does a good job breaking outside, but Cartersville has eight players within the box. And mm -hmm. we talked about the situational opportunity for them to win. They have to stop Buford's run. Buford's a running team. Yep. You always want to take away what a team does best and then let them try to figure it out. Right now, they're doing a good job. Tris Fize, number nine in white, in on the tackle. Two or three of his buddies. Gain of four, just power football. Motion wide, good bounce, second effort by TD Roof, gets it close to the first down, about two yards short, so let's say gain of four more, make it third down and two. Kind of followed TD Roof and all the kids from the area, the Simpson and the coaches' sons that play in the GFL to go in that football league as they grow up. I mean, it's a, there's some really talented legacy kids that are playing around Georgia in football. He's one of them. Third down and two. You see Buford right there. Two of their first three. Big hole up the middle. First down. But that hole closed up in a hurry. But you move the sticks after a gain of five. Nice wrinkle there. That's a dive play. They're going right up the middle. All this is is they're trying to knock the line of scrimmage back. TD Roof. Let's just run it right down the middle. Just trying to split the Red Sea. Open it up. Having some success right now. It's a slow crawl, as you see. That's what Buford likes to do. They wear you down. They wear you down. Conditioning is going to be the key. It's also going to be a key for Cartersville today. Muddle huddle. One more time. Backs in the eye. Hand off deep. Christian Turner that time. Got to about the 26, so maybe a gain of two or three. Nice shoestring tackle by Torian Scrutchins. Excellent job. Getting in the backfield, getting penetration. That Cartersville front, they're making a nice wall. Not many cracks on this wall so far. And on that front three, Brandon Wade's the biggest at 260 pounds. Scrutchens listed at 210, Pullman's at 227. Then with your linebackers, biggest one's at 225, so they are plugging holes. Officially a gain of one, toss pitch. 
stepping out of ankle tackle, but look at the gang tackling that showed up for Cartersville. Trey Kramer, number one part of it. Xavier Coaxum, number 11, a part of it. Tymon Pennyman, number four, a part of it. Brandon Wade, 51. I could, I could keep saying that they were all a part of it because they really all were a part of it. <laughs> a gang of Purple Hurricanes on the tackle. Trey Creamer, he tried to take him down. He took him down pretty hard. I like the attitude. I like it. It's physical football. 15th play of this drive. Swing pass. Picked up. Once again, good tackling. Ball's on the floor. Do they call him down? Yes, they do. So it would stay with Buford. Kobe Whitfield in on the tackle. The catch by Joshua Blackwell. Let's check the end of the play here. Three, four, whoa. Looks like it came out with contact with his own guy, Jake Simpson, 17, and Joshua Blackwell. But Blackwell ended up with the football. The ball was clearly out. But again, we talked about it. Doesn't matter what happened. You got to move on to the next play. If you're the opponent, got to move on. Look what Buford's doing here on fourth down and four. Wild Wolf formation. Ball start. We move it back Ball five. Start. On the offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. Let's see what Jess Simpson's reaction to that was. Anthony Grant, the 10th grader, right there in the middle of it. Now let's look at the situation. Mm -hmm. It's fourth and where? Somewhere around nine. What is it? Fourth and nine? Right. This isn't the type of game that Buford likes. They don't want to be backed up. They don't want to have to be forced to throw. They want short yardage because the last play they were going to run a speed sweep. It was what? Fourth and four or five, somewhere in there. That's a manageable play. Now you want to see what Nick Roof can do here, particularly with his arm. Their long field goal kicker, Daniel Garcia, broke his ankle. And is out for this game. Out. Buford. So now it's Bernardo Burgos That's if he wants to have a kicker out. do it, the ninth grader who would be kicking in this situation. Let's go back to game 14 last year, Weinman Stadium. And here's your power. Buford out to the early lead. And Trevor Lawrence is a freshman. He had a bit of a rough night. And to you, what you were talking about, Buford dropping eight with a passing defense, picking off the freshman there. And well, then the only points on the board came from a field goal from Cartersville. And that's right. And Buford pounded Cartersville last year. And one of the things that Joey King talked about, we worked harder in the weight room. We worked harder in the offseason. And don't get it, don't look at it any other way. Mm -hmm. Cartersville entire season was built around beating this Buford team. 27-3 final last year for Buford, making their way to the Georgia Dome one more time, beating St. Pius in the final for their third title in a row as they chase after their second four peak. There's Joey King trying to prevent it, fourth down and nine. Jess Simpson looking for offense now. Instead of going for three, batting in the air, incomplete time. Trying to get the ball to T.D. Ruth. Great coverage that time. Great coverage that time. Jake Simpson no down put it. on the Georgia Dome turf. Here's the end of the, here's the play from ground level. Well, you see Mick Roof, he has time. He tries to get the, he gets the ball out of his hands. Great coverage. Great coverage by Cartersville. There were three white jerseys who had dropped into that zone. One of them being Tymon Pennyman. He's going to have to catch his breath rather quickly since he goes back on out on offense. And there's Jake, 6'2", 200 pounder. You know, Nelly, one of the keys I'm seeing that we were discussing is the ability for both of these teams to have multiple coverages. I'm seeing cover one. I'm seeing cover two. A lot of cover three, which is deep. Cover two, stopping the run, keeping everybody in front of you. But I haven't seen many blitzes yet. But it's going to come. But the key for each one of these teams, you got to figure out a way to establish the run. You got to figure it out. So when you're saying cover one and cover two, for those well, who don't know, what's that? Cover one's man to man. Okay. You have one man. Cover two's the zone. 
So what that means is cover two, you got two safeties over the top. Cover three, you're preventing the deep ball. And if you can stop the run with three men, that's all you need. Those are perfect coverages. 741. A very fast moving first half. Trevor Lawrence out of the hands of the Buford defense. Throws it high and incomplete. Terrius Callahan is the intended receiver. Thrown a bit too high. Second down. Good job by Buford's pass rush affecting the quarterback Trevor Lawrence making them have to get out of his rhythm. He was out of rhythm that time. Excellent job by Buford but even better job probably by Trevor Lawrence not taking the sack. He had a completion there. You just got to catch the ball. Got to look the ball all the way into your hands. And we talk about quarterbacks rolling and throwing against their body and with their body. For a righty to roll to his left. Lawrence has to square up in a hurry mm -hmm. to get the pass completed with the motion that he wants to get it done on. Time out. Try throwing Carter's the pass good. if you're right handed with first the left hand. Time out. That's almost like what it is. 735 first half Cartersville and Buford battle of number one and number two. They are scoreless. We'll have the rest of the second quarter. We come back. Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. But if you think that the folks at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville are proud to be supporters of Georgia high school athletics, you got that right. As Georgia's skilled trade industries continue to grow, so does the need for young skilled workers. Position yourself at the front of the line for your next career opportunity within the trades by visiting GoBuildGeorgia.com. And we're back here on GPB TV and let's go to the sidelines. Our own Sam Crenshaw has some guy. He says he's about 6'1", but he's probably about 5'11". <laughs> Chuck, you would say that. You know this guy. Chuck's <laughs> giving you a hard time. I'm, I'm sure he is. Chuck, I'm on the field right now. This is where he taught me how to be physical, man. I just tell people all the time. People ask me, who's one of the toughest people you ever played against? And I'm like, you have no idea the intensity that Chuck Smith bought. And I love watching him do the coverage. And, and you know, we're back home, man. We're back home. We are back home. What brings you out here? The high school championship week? Yeah, I got friends and family uh, who are associated with the Beaver football program. Uh, my kids over in Mill Creek. So we were excited that both of them had a possibility of playing for the state championship last year. And I came out here to support them. And again, you know, it's just great to be a part of it and to see the excitement and energy of football on this level for high school kids, you know? I was going to say that. You've seen football in a lot of right. places with the way we do the high school state championship here in Georgia. It's a great, it, I mean, it's it's fantastic the way the setup is. Not only just your coverage to be, you know, you know, give you guys a plug, but the coverage is outstanding. But you see the everybody coming in here and everybody wearing the proper colors and stuff. It's, all, it's like a college atmosphere and it's fantastic to see for Georgia. What about the size and speed of these guys? That's what I was thinking, Sam. I'm like, I walk on the field and you see these high school players now. They're so big. They're so fast. And hey, they got guys like Chuck Smith training them. So I know they're going to be ready. Send it back upstairs to Chuck. Back upstairs to Chuck Smith. This is the Dirty Bird signing out. GP. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. Wait a minute. I, I love thought, it. I thought that was OJ signing out. Go. <laughs> no. Hand off around the side of the 35. Trey Kramer looks like it's going to come back. Good to catch up with Jam. Good guy. There it is. Good guy. There's the banner. We gotta get Jam up in that ring of honor. Get him a banner up there. Best running Remember back. I thought you were gonna say had. get Jam up there in the rafters. Yes. <laughs> the ring. Put of him up there. Yeah, he needs to be on the other side. I like the championships <laughs> are cool, but he's earned the ring of honor. And someday, you know, hopefully he'll be rewarded for it. But it's good to see there he Jamal is. down there. So many celebrities, so many guys here, coaches, everybody's here for this big game. And I'm gonna just tell you, there's nothing more special. For a former oh. NFL player mm -hmm. to come out here to see these young men compete. The and you know he saw himself on the big screen just a just second ago. He's not trying to be all cool, not looking at the monitor and looking at himself. Oh, Jamal don't have to try to be cool. <laughs> That's one thing about Jamal. He's cool. <laughs> C-O-O-L? Yep. What's that spell? Cool. Flag takes it back. Second down and 17, back to the 20. Three in the pattern up high. Carter's ball pass. Going to call complete out to the 29, so that gets half of it back. So it makes it third down and about eight. Let's take another look on the high pass. Got them gloves on it. I like those hands. Stick them on his hands right here, Nelly. Darius Callahan holding Beautiful. on to it. Good Great. grab there. Great concentration. Number nine, Joshua Blackwell, in on defense for Buford. Third down and eight. Coming up on the halfway point here of the second quarter. 
Quad A Championship, 6A Championship to follow here on the great GPB with Talcott County and Roswell. Heavy protection left. Lawrence rolling, throws against his body, looping pass, and it's caught. What a throw and catch. Excellent coverage, excellent throw, <laughs> excellent catch. Terrius Callahan for the gain of 36. Watch Terrius Callahan. He sells it in. Then he gets vertical. Excellent job. Watch this concentration. Eyes on your work, young man. An excellent catch by Terrius Callahan. Joshua Blackwell and R.J. Walker back defending. First and 10 from the Buford 35. Lawrence looking for a swing. And is it intercepted? We're calling incomplete. Joshua Blackwell in on that one. Let's take a look at the pass. I tell you this, Trevor Lawrence is under the heat right here. He's been the last couple plays, he's been throwing under duress. He's getting the ball out of his hands, though. Let's see if it. Yep, hit the turf right there. Incomplete. Good call. Getting information from the sidelines. Trevor Lawrence, Cartersville. Matthew Parker, Joshua Blackwell, 9 and 28 up high. Handoff. Gets it to the 30, so gain of five. Cuts that yardage in half. So third down and five. As we officially hit the halfway point here in the second quarter. Trey Kramer on the carry. Now this is where Trevor Lawrence, the Cartersville quarterback, becomes really dangerous. You got third and five. This is a clearly a manageable spot on the field. You have a lot of different options. Go for the, the three or four, or maybe even take a shot downfield. Three down low for Cartersville. He Great. saw the pressure, Nelly. He saw the pressure. They're, they were going to come to the right and made an adjustment. Trey Kramer protecting to his right. Quick out. Goes behind the receiver, incomplete. Looking for Antoine Jefferson that time. Fourth down. Let's see what Cartersville does here. Looks like they're going to try a field goal with Jonathan Cruz. Trevor Lawrence checked off that time when he saw the pressure coming from the left side. Very smart move to check off, but also a very smart adjustment now you're starting to see from the Buford defense. They're sending pressure. So they're sending pressure blitzers away from the tight end. 47 yard field goal attempt. Bruce has hit from 53. Joey King has called Jonathan Cruz consistent all year. Hits it from 47. First points of the game. Go to Cartersville. Keep your head down. Follow through. Plant foot square. That left foot was aiming yep. right at the goal post, right between them. Let's take a look at the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. Two state championships, 91 and 99. A lot of the 99ers are here. Four straight region titles, 18 overall. Mike Earwood got that first title in 91. Frank Barton got the 99 title. Six NFL players. We talked about Ronnie Brown, Keith Henderson, Robert Lavetta, part of that group. Andre Fluellen, uh -huh. former Florida State great from the Cartersville Purple Hurricane. Uh -huh. He's either here or probably watching. Great community in Cartersville. There's a look at your scoring drive brought to us by our friends of the Technical College System of Georgia, TCSG, Learn More, Earn More. Went 53 steps, took him seven plays in two minutes and 27 seconds. Do you remember the McCluskey brothers? Were they from Carter's? Where were they from? David. You oh, you had to ask me that. Rome. They're from Rome. That's West Rome. West Rome. I think it's West Rome, according to the commander, Steve, Steve Graham. Okay. I defer. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Foot into football. Line drive picked up at the 8. 20. 25. Bounce outside. Thought he had the corner can but a gaggle of Hurricanes again at the 25, and that's where Buford will start. 18-yard return. It's another round for the Buford Wolves. The Purple Hurricanes are swarming like a pack of stinging bees. <laughs> Great special teams coverage. Xavier Gantz trying to make moves. He's dipping, he's diving, he's bouncing, he's spinning. 11 guys on the ball for Cartersville. 11 guys chasing the ball. Really active, a lot more energy this year than last year. Improve. Backs on the eye, power set for Buford. 
Hand to the tail. Slip down, no game. Gant trying to cut with left foot, right foot, and ended up falling down, so it'll be second down and ten. Really interesting wrinkle. I like what Cartersville's doing that they didn't do last year. This year they have their defensive end and defensive tackles lined up in front of Buford's offensive guards and tackles because Buford likes to run off tackle. Mm -hmm. So they're not giving the edge. Right now they're knocking the tackles back. It's Cartersville, so there's nothing outside. And Buford's forced to cut back inside. Seven in the box right now for Cartersville. Look out, knocked in the air, almost intercepted. That Kobe was Whitfield. Lateral. Kobe Whitfield had it, but you had a good point. That looked like a lateral almost. He threw it. If it goes backwards in and uh -huh. it's tipped, it's yep. a live ball. All right, let's take, let's a, take look. a look. Let's see where he throws it from. Launch. Ooh, that's right on the line. Right on the line. Great defense there by Kobe Whitfield. Foot planted. Whitfield skied for that one for the deflection. Excellent call by the referee. Excellent call. Whitfield getting interest from Minnesota. It's 6 1 195. Three in the pattern, motion up high, and we have whistles. Right, let's take a listen. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, replay, third down. Moving back five more to create third and 15 from the 21. 426 to go. A lot of folks knew this was going to be a heavyweight fight. Both teams trading haymakers, number one versus number two. The top ranked sophomore quarterback in the country in Trevor Lawrence for Cartersville. One of the top dynasties in the 2000s with the Buford Wolves. Let's see what Cartersville's defense can do. Third and 15, high snap, drop down, draw play, and almost breaks it for the first down. Christian Turner getting some quality handles early on. He just ended up a couple yards short. Gain of 12, fourth down. He's part of that three-headed monster, Christian Turner. Nice job here running effectively, but Cartersville's cool with this. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We don't, all we're trying to do is get a punt, return the punt. So Buford played right into the hands of the Cartersville Purple, Purple Hurricanes. Nick Kamilowicz puts foot into football, turns over. Fair catch at the 34-yard line, and that's where Cardi's will start. 33-yard punt and a fair catch. 3.28 to go, first half. Cartersville in a 47-yard field goal gets the only points on the board so far. These two high-powered offenses, we get a pitching duel. <laughs> well, a lot of the credit goes to, right now, the defensive staffs. Clearly, they've done a heck of a job with the coverage. They're mixing coverage with pressure. They're sending pressure with coverage, and it's confusing both of the quarterbacks. And they're sending pressure with pressure and coverage with coverage. <laughs> exactly right. So that's what I get for listening to Dr. Ruff. <laughs> Here's Trevor Lawrence's numbers. Four of his first 11 for 56 yards, and most of them came on the long bomb down the field. Lawrence slings it on his interception. Looking for Antoine Jefferson that time. Lawrence that time didn't, he's not setting his feet. That's what pressure does to you. Trevor Lawrence that time, he's drifting. You got to set your feet, get, dig them in the ground, you got to follow through on your throat. But what you've seen that time, he's getting a little antsy. The pressure's been getting there. He's been happy hit feet. a little bit. He's getting happy feet. You, you'll watch right here. He's going to drift back. He takes the ball and watch his feet. He's, he's not setting his feet. He's not setting his feet. Set his feet and get the ball out of your hands. He's drifting a little bit. He's completed only two of his last five, so they're going to hand the ball off to Pennyman. Pennyman gets it up close to the 42, gain of seven, maybe eight. So third down, manageable again for Cartersville. No question. Great call for Cartersville on that second down, picking up six yards here. This makes it a lot more manageable, particularly when you got a quarterback in Pennyman. I'm expecting him to start trying to get the ball in his hands a little bit more, establish that run, but this is a clearly a a great spot for this Cartersville team. Under three minutes to go first half. You see Cartersville's first half numbers on third down. Only converted twice so far. 
Hand off Pennyman looking for a hole. Gonna be close. He's probably gonna be a yard short. He didn't get it. Needed three, got two. Good eyes there, John. About a yard and a half off. Play field position. Flip the field. Fourth round goes to Buford on that series defense. Well, they tried to run the inside zone here. What you see here is they're going to go inside right in here, trying to go inside. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. He has the option to bounce it outside or go inside. Nothing there. Good defense that time by Buford. Bunch of green jerseys there. Green monsters. Big kick. By Cruz bounces at the 10 and gets good English again. They'll mark it at the 8. They're marking it down inside the 4. Looks like one's at the 4. It was touched at the 8. Marked at the 4. 51 yard punt. No return. So it'll be at the 8. So 47 yard punt after the first touching at the 8 yard line. So 47 the yard punt. Yard no line return. Here comes Ruth down. again. Great punt. Some great punters. The last two days, I've seen some some of the best kicking and punting. And we knew in special teams. If you yes. had special teams, that would be huge in a game 15 situation. Oh yeah, because when you're playing, the last two days has been a lot about big plays on defense. And what you're seeing is you're trying to play the field position game. Hand off up the middle. Turnover off the fumble and strip. Time and Pennyman comes out with it. We just alluded to what? Special teams. Mm -hmm. Think about what this does. They bounce, punt it, they put them deep, they get a turnover. That's why you want to have effective special teams. They yep. give the ball to Cartersville. So that one to me, Jonathan Cruz, the punter, is the one who set him up here. And what you see here, Basically, that's a dive play. He fumbles the ball, he gets stripped out. Strip in the air. Anthony Grant had the hand After off. After the change of stripped possession. Up into the air. Now watch Inverted this. Inverted whistle. Still and pops ball, right into the hands. Brandon Wade, number 51, does an excellent job. The junior makes the first big play of the game. Grant's first carry of the game ends up being a strip and a short field for Cartersville. What can they do here? First and goal from the 10, first turnover of the game. You'd mentioned the first four rounds, they were 10 nines, or at least they were 10 10 <laughs> rounds. Let's see what round five is here. Protection left. Three in the pattern for Cartersville. Handoff. Fake. Lawrence trying to get to the corner. Does he have the edge? No. Booyah. Blown up at the five by Xavier Gant. Another two-way player. Nice job by him getting off the block. Great job by Xavier Grant. As you see him up here, look up here. Watch him. He's going to pop up in a There's second. Here 20, he's going to show up. Here he comes. Right, Bam. Yeah, right there. He's going to show up. Nice well, job with his shoulder, leading with his shoulder, not his head. Good tackle. Good hit. Thought that he could get to the wide side and get to the edge. The first time we've seen Trevor Lawrence really tuck and run on a design. Motion. Here's your fire route that you had yesterday. Touchdown, Cartersville. Six five passer, six five receiver. Lawrence Forrestal, six. Well, they went away from the boundary, the short side. They went to the field. Excellent job by Trevor Lawrence. That's called a fire pass. The reason why? Because you know that you only have a little bit of time to get it out, and you're going to fire it really fast. Everybody goes to the flats. Excellent job. Excellent job. Jonathan Cruz in for the PAT. Got it. Your technical college system of Georgia touchdown replays. TCSG learn more, earn more. You're right here. You see the fire pass. What they do is they try to bring all the receivers are going to come towards the quarterback. He had three different levels, as you'll see here. He'll have receivers at every level in the backfield. Coming out of the backfield, you got your tight end going on a curl. Yep. Excellent job, Trevor Lawrence. And again, we knew it. He didn't have to sit. I mean, great job throwing the ball on the move. That, that's a very, very 
hard throw to make, particularly when, when you're moving towards your right or when you're moving towards your left. Nonetheless, you said three levels. You saw receivers yep. on the fire route open at the 10, yep. open at the 5, and Forrest all in the end zone. And then they, what they do there, they'll give him a run throw option. And he didn't take it. He took, made the right choice. Here's your scoring drive. 10 steps took two plays, 13 seconds. It's, Once again, brought to us by our friends at TCSG. Learn more and more. It starts with Jonathan Cruz, the punter, number 17. He puts him inside the five, mm -hmm. create the defense makes a turnover. That's how you win championships when you're in the championship scenario. Big Speaking of Cruz, foot in the football. And will not be returned. Man, these kickers are booming it today. And once again, reminder, high school rules. Once it crosses the plane of the goal line, it is not returnable, so it's an instant touchback. There's Xavier Gant. And you'll see that there's been a common opponent last couple of years. We've shown you the highlights of what happened last year with Buford in the semifinals. Losing to St. Pius in the second round in 13. Lost to Buford in the semi back in 2012. 2010, lost to Cedar Grove in the first round and lost to Gainesville in the second round. The time before that, big hole off the left-hand side. Ankle tackle at the 30. It's good enough for a first down. Move the sticks, Martin Mangrum. Great Kramer in on the tackle, and Mangrum's been pretty quiet here in the first half. Yeah, he has, and Buford, they've been getting, they've been having success, they just haven't had the big plays. They haven't been able to turn it into points. They're going, they're going to have to answer here eventually, because Trevor Lawrence, it looks like he's going to, he's going to eventually get it going, so you want to make sure that you have to be able to put points up early. You don't want to have to come from behind with this Buford team that doesn't throw the ball that often. Roof, handoff. Three or four parties will players stop it for no game. As we come up on a minute to go first half. Darian Paulnitz, Brandon Wade, all involved. All right, here we go right here. Look, here, here, and here, guys. You look at the, def the defensive end and the defensive outside and the outside linebacker. They're going to, every time they're trying to fight here to, so they can't, Bounce it outside. They can't go inside. That's a unique wrinkle. Handoff out to the 40. Xavier Gant on the carry. Down to 32 seconds. And we got a flag back at the 37. Smart defense so far by Cartersville. Very smart. Well the result cooked. of the play was a first down. After the play was over, we got a personal foul. On the offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. So from the end of the play, subtract 15, and that's where Buford will start with 32 seconds. It's not the kind of situation that Buford wants to be in. You don't want to be backed up. Second quarter. But Run the ball. Probably want to live the fight again. Don't take any chances here. Let's see what the adjustments might be at halftime for just Simpson and the Wolves. Power set for Buford, under 20 seconds. Handoff, not much happening there. Once again, great penetration. Darian Pullman, it's 41 in there. Miller Forrestall involved and Gantz down. Excellent tackling by the Cartersville defense. Just hope Xavier Gant gets up so he can finish the game, compete. It's not looking good. Remember, Gant was injured early in the year but came back in week 10. Well, you never like to see this. Georgia Tech commit, bright future. This hope is not as serious as it looks. Buford's physio staff obviously being very ginger about it especially with a player who's been previously injured and out a lot, and they're looking at that left knee. Let's take a look at what happened. Watch the left leg, left knee of Xavier Gant toward the end of the play. As he's being dragged down in that pile, looks like he got twisted on the way down. And, and Caleb Auer, number eight, also got caught up in the wash in that. Here's your handoff right there. And then Auer got rolled by Gant. 
Hour kind of hopped off the field. And that's a good sign. It's going to be interesting in the second half to see if Cartersville can continue to maintain this pace, particularly stopping Buford's run. Buford eventually, they're going to have to start taking a few shots if, um, if they're able to, not able to be successful. And I mean, just throwing the ball downfield, that's going to be the challenge. Cartersville's, they're in a good position right now in this game. 23 of the 27 plays that Buford has run in this game have been on the ground. And the way Cartersville's front's playing right now, it's going to be hard for Buford to win, what is it, their 23rd? I mean, is their 13th? It's going to be hard for them to win their 13th if they're not able to throw the ball with any kind of effectiveness today. And it looks like Buford's probably just going to muddle, huddle, and try to run the clock out here. Get under center. Don't have to snap it. They do. Toss pitch up the middle. Up to the 33-yard line, and that'll do it for the first half. A first half dominated by defense. And Cartersville has kept the Buford Wolves off the scoreboard in the first 24 minutes. Unbelievable first half by the defense of Cartersville, showing a great new wrinkle, putting three different players <laughs> on the strong side and taking away Buford's famous off-power tackle runs. And we'll see how the adjustments happen in the second half for Buford. But Cartersville, first four rounds, Cartersville. First four rounds go to Cartersville. We'll catch up with Sam Crenshaw here with Joey King. Sam, what's the word? Here with Coach King in the locker room, you challenge your team to come out here and play with intensity. They got you a 10 nothing lead going to the locker room. Yes, sir, they're doing that. Our defense is playing lights out right now. What Buford does is they wear on you late in the game, so we got to make sure that we, we don't give to their push. Talk about special teams. You want special teams to show up in the state championship game. We saw that for you. Yes, sir. You got to play big in all three phases, but we hit a field goal. Kickers kicking an end zone. Unfortunately, our punter got hurt, but our kicker stepped in and punted the ball really well. Let's see more things in the second half for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, let's go to Mark and Jackie. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam, thank you very much. Coming up at halftime, we will hear from both the Cartersville and the Buford marching bands. Plus, we'll talk to both principals and talk about the school spirit this week of championship week. We'll also hear from some proud parents of a Buford star on the football field. Also, we'll check in with the social media update, find out what people are saying about this game. That's coming up on the GPB halftime show. Don't go anywhere. Whether you plan to attend a two-year college, four-year university, or go straight into the world of work, the Georgia CTAE Work-Based Learning Program teaches students essential career skills through real-world experiences and on-the-job training. Joe gets up at 7 a.m., washes his face, gets dressed, grabs breakfast to go. He then patiently waits for the bus. Chats up his classmates, goes to school, doesn't go in. Great act, Joe, but you're only fooling yourself. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? 
This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not gonna come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Like, I don't really ah, you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Welcome back to Championship Weekend here on GPB. It's the GHSA Football Championships live from the Georgia Dome. And right now we're at halftime of the Class 4A game between Cartersville and Buford. And right now the top ranked and undefeated Purple Hurricanes are leading this one 10 to nothing. That's right, Buford finding themselves in a little bit of a dogfight. It's electric in here inside the Georgia Dome, but it's also electric in the world of social media. We've just reached 10,000 followers on Twitter. So thank you to everyone who's been hanging out with us at GPB Sports. You definitely want to make sure you're part of the action and find us on GPB Sports Facebook and Twitter because we have some awesome contests that we are doing, and there are some awesome prizes included in that, and you want to be a part of it. So we have a winner for Chewy Unleashed. The winner is Virginia Kaiser. Figured out that Chewy is in Georgia, but he's not in this Georgia. He's in Eurasian Georgia. That is next to Russia. So more precisely, he's in Tbilisi. And I'm guessing that he's a little confused right now. He's in the wrong Georgia. So we need some help getting him back. But hey, Virginia was the proud winner of this Chewy Unleashed contest and gets a free iPad mini. So thanks to our friends at the, George, the Health Science Teacher Technology Educators Association, part of 127 career pathways available to Georgia high school students. School counselors have all the details, and you can learn more about that at gadoe.org. So there's our little friend Chewy there hanging out in Tbilisi, Georgia. The wrong Georgia, though, Chewy. It's okay. Also, be sure to tweet us. Tell us who you're rooting for, where you're watching the game from. Send us your photos. The best ones will make it on the air, and you will receive a free selfie stick. So we have Christina Walsh, Walsh and a young fan here. We've been watching you guys since yesterday, so every halftime is a good nap time. Well, that's good. I'm glad we're putting someone to sleep. That's good. And then we have another fan from most schools going to the Dome as a vacation, but Buford, it's an annual trip. They are in a little bit of a dogfight right now, though. And then we're showing some love here for the hurricane warning. Go Canes, beat Buford, and bring the trophy home. And then don't forget to participate in our poll. You can find this on Twitter at GPB Sports. Who do you think is going to win this matchup? So far, the majority rules that they're saying it will be the Buford Wolves. So make sure that you are finding us on Facebook and on Twitter. And don't forget to use the hashtag Dome Wars. Time now to welcome in the principal of Cartersville High School, Mark Fuhrer back, and thanks for coming on with us. What's it been like this week at Cartersville High School with all the enthusiasm coming here to the championship game? Mark, it's been a great week, a busy week, but a great week. A lot of excitement in the community, a lot of people showing their support, you know, from selling pre-sale tickets to T-shirts for the Dome and all those things that come with it, making sure we get transportation arrangements taken care of. It's been busy, but it's been good and a lot of fun. What's been going on this semester at Cartersville High School? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a good first semester a lot of our kids are, are, are real involved with a, a wide range of things from you know sports to fine arts uh, to student government and so you know, our, our band's playing behind us right now they represented us well uh, last week in the uh, health care of uh, children's health care of Atlanta parade in downtown Atlanta they did a great job of their concert this week chorus is a concert coming up uh, sports has done a great our cheerleaders represented us well a few weeks ago at, at their state uh, tournament so it's it's been a good 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 first semester it's hard to believe it's almost over our, our kids are preparing <laughs> for their final exams well let's play the game are you smarter than here's a question and is this there are many classic holiday movies to mention but do you know which one was denounced by the fbi as communist propaganda was it a miracle on 34th street b it's a wonderful life or c white christmas what do you think i'm going to go with uh, b it's a wonderful life you are absolutely correct. Uh, the, the Wonderful Life drew the ire of the feds in a scathing 1947 memo titled Communist Infiltration of the Motion Picture Industry. The film was denounced for deliberately maligning the upper class and, quote, attempting to show that people who had money were mean and despicable characters. The original Occupy of Wall Street, don't you think? That's How right. about that? Well, you mentioned your band. We're going to listen in right now to the great Cartersville Marching Band brought to you by Regions Bank.
Great job by the Cartersville Marching Band brought to you by Regions Bank. Now time for a championship edition of what we call Rent Check, a time to check in with the parents. And Jackie's got a couple of parents there that's an outstanding player from Buford High School. Absolutely. Joining me now are Tony and Monica Mangrim. Their son is Martin, as you know. And you guys, a little bit in a dog fight right now, but are you excited to be here? We're excited to be here. All right, are you ready to play rent check? We're, we're trying to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first question, if Martin could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, he wants to fly. What do you think, Dad? Speed. He wants to fly. Mom's right. Mom <laughs> wins. All right. Game's over. Mom wins. I'm just kidding. All right. What is the best present he's ever received? Oh, I know that. iPhone. <laughs> Yeah. Mom's right again. All right, last question. Favorite holiday tradition? Oh, gosh. Eating macaroni and cheese for Thanksgiving. I don't <laughs> Give her the swag. She knows what she's doing <laughs> correctly. That was right. She's nailing it over here. Wife showed you up there. <laughs> All right, Mark, that'll do it for the Buford Rent Check. We'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, great job there by the Mangroves. Coming up with the GPB Championship Show Halftime Show, we'll hear from the Buford Marching Band, play another round of Are You Smarter, and John Nelson has a visit with one of the most successful high school coaches in Georgia history. We'll talk to him in just a minute. All that and more coming your way as the GHSA Championship Weekend continues right here on the great GPB. Stay with us. Beautiful, what's your this program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. For the best of the best, the journey is almost over. Just one last challenge lies ahead. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. It should be one way of a football game tonight. Game day brings out the best in all of us. Every day is game day. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the 2015 GHSA Football Championships Halftime Show live on GPB. We're midway through the 4A championship game right now. Cartersville leading the defending champs, Buford Wolves, by a 10 to nothing score. We've got 24 big minutes to go in this one. I know, hard to believe that we're making it through this far so far. But first, we're going to check in with Banks Bitterman, the principal of Buford High School. He is uh, here for another round of the game show that's taking the globe by storm. Are you smarter? Banks, thank you for joining us. Well, my pleasure to be here. How's what's going on at Buford these days? Well, you know, we, each and every day we're striving for AAA excellence, it's excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. You know, I, I will tell you this, in Buford, um, it really is about family. And with that, I, I would like to give a shout out. Um, we've got a special family in need right now, and it's the Kmall family. And Logan was uh, one of our star pitchers on the state championship softball team. And 
and her brother Maddie uh, is in the hospital with Egeslin, um, fighting for his life. Oh wow! Uh, Father Teo uh, is at Gwinnett Medical. Um, I'd like to send them prayers um, and with yeah. everybody um, throughout the state, whoever's watching this. Um, I know Angie is uh, the mother is, is is about as strong a person I've ever seen. Well, um, well, I'm glad that you're here to to share to share some share some love. But it's a good thing though that the team is no rookie to be in the state championship game. You guys looking looking for a second half comeback here? Well, you know what? Um, the beautiful thing is uh, we've been in this place before. Right. Um, Coach Simpson is one of the best, if I have to say, one of the best coaches that exist. Um, I can guarantee we will see a different second half. Um, All right. I've been with him a long time, and, and I guarantee you the boys will be ready to play, and I'm excited about it. All right. He said it first. Let's get to the game here. I'll take the question from the lightsaber. Okay. Who's waging the war on Christmas in Norwalk, Connecticut? Town leaders were incensed when the lights failed on the town's Christmas tree just ahead of the official tree lighting. An investigation determined that the culprits were either A, a bunch of mischief-minded middle schoolers, B, a Grinchy resident who's home faces the park he says the lights are too bright or see squirrels what do you think this is a tough one you know what it is a tough one but um i think those little rascal squirrels usually uh eat something the rascal so squirrels, I, that's I, correct I, i'm just guessing all I'm right guessing. well someone's winning up here that's correct score one for the rodents norwalk officials say squirrels are the only possible culprits after discovering the wires weren't cut they were not cleaned through at, at heights only a squirrel could scale. It cost, an extra, it cost an extra 80 bucks to replace four strands of lights, plus the cost of a bucket truck and three hours of labor to rewire the tree. Well, there you go. You learn something new every single day. All right, thanks. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Now we're going to listen in to a great band. It's time to hear from the Buford Wolves and another round of the band segment pro presented by Regions Bank. Great job there by the Buford High School Band, brought to you by Regions Bank. Let's take a look at where we are so far. Earlier today, stu two state champions have already been crowned in class single A private. It was Elka over Aquinas, 35 to 14. And then in double A earlier, it was Pace Academy, 42 to 21 over Fitzgerald. We are at halftime of the 4A game, and it's the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes leading the Buford Wolves 10 to nothing. And coming up, at 8 o'clock, the 6A showdown between two undefeated teams, the defending champion Colquitt County Packers on that 29-game winning streak, taking on the 14-0 Roswell Hornets. Three more halves of championship football to go, so don't miss a minute. Time now to check in with John Nelson for another edition of John's Georgia, brought to you by the Georgia EMC. And, John, you've got a story about one of the most successful coaches and maybe one of the most unique coaches in Georgia high school football history. Doing it seven feet at a time here at the Buford game. You've seen the pedigree and what they've been able to do since the year 2000, building their program. At the Marist School, someone has done it for almost twice as long. I had it, two-yard game. It's not something you see every day, and no, we're not talking about Marist in the playoffs. That's happened every year since 1982. It's their offense, the veer, the wishbone, the triple option, whatever you call it. It's been the backbone of the team's success. It's discipline at its finest and drives teams crazy, unless, of course, you're the one running it. I mean, it's just I've, since I've been doing it since seventh grade, it's all so familiar, and it's always fun to see the teams that we play against because you can tell they have never like seen them because they're always so used to the spread format, the right read option, and to see teams try to stop the revere, stop triple, it's fun trying to see them defend it because you can tell some teams don't really know what to do. It really is, I mean, it's unique. That's what I like about it, you know. When people see you getting a four-point stance on game day, they usually kind of question you, like, why are you guys doing that? But I kind of like it, I embrace it, you know. It's more of a grind, and you really kind of get into that as the season goes on. It's a lot of fun. 
And against a team like Woodward Academy, today the possessions are limited. The mistakes have to be minimal in a clash of styles. You have to do one thing. Play a near perfect game. I, you really don't hear that a lot. You have to play a near perfect game. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a good team. We're third round. There's not much teams out there who are, aren't going to be very good. So, I mean, we have to play a good ball. It's good. The mastermind has been at the forefront of it for 31 seasons as head coach, and Alan Chadwick is fifth all-time with 343 wins. Realistically, he could be number two on the list this time next year. Having won the school's two state titles is cool and all, but Chadwick doesn't get wrapped up in numbers. You know, the ones I remember the most are the tough losses, the close close losses, and the ones you felt like you could and should have won. Those are the ones that kind of wear on me the most. But it's a feeling of pride to, to look back and see the, uh, the consistency uh, and the longevity that we've had. And that's due to the, the players, the administration, the, the coaches that we've had to come through the program. We've been very blessed to, to be around a lot of great people. And Maris lost to Woodward Academy in the third round. Woodward would play Buford. Buford has advanced, beating them in the fourth round and being here today. Alan Chadwick, one of the cool guys in Georgia high school football, Jackie. Thanks, John. Good stuff, as always. <laughs> it's time now for our career play of the game presented by the Technical College System of Georgia. Want a career in the manufacturing or construction industry? Get a free education in precision manufacturing or welding and joining at the Technical College System of Georgia. Workers in manufacturing and construction are urgently needed in Georgia. A free education in 10 high demand industries awaits you at the Technical College System of Georgia. Change your life. TCSG.edu. Ready for the second half? <laughs> I'm ready. 24 minutes at the minimum left I know. in this game. And you got to hand it to Buford, though. I mean, holding to quarterback Trevor Lawrence only 10 points right now, not so bad. And we'll see what happens here in the second half. We're counting down to kickoff in the second half. We're going to check it back up to St. John Nelson and to Chuck Smith, the former Falcon, right after this timeout. And we'll see you again at the trophy presentation. Enjoy the second half. Questions. Can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers, anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. All this going on and on about how different we all are. Here's an idea. Let's talk about how we're all the same. How we live, how we love, the young, the old, the way we wear our hearts on our sleeves, the way we get up, my friends, and the way we get down. From our back roads all the way to our tree-lined streets, it is on Sunday that we are all the same. Because on Sunday, we are all Falcons. Preventive care. That's having your back. Welcome back to the Class Quad A Championship, the 2015 Tommy Gillibo GHSA Football Championships here at the Georgia Dome. Picture perfect day after the dense fog. Dense fog got out of the way, turned out to be a very nice day. So far, the first half is a very nice first half for Cartersville, leading Buford, number one versus number two, 10 to nothing. And Dr. Rush, your prescription <laughs> called for a lot of trench warfare this evening. No surprises, but special teams. We learned kickers are people, too. And it was kickers <laughs> in the first half in defense. 
And we talked about special teams. And the most important part, one of the things that Cartersville's done, they've been able to kick a long field goal, as you see here, and the accuracy, awesome kick here. Fantastic kickers all weekend, particularly on kicks like that. But when you look at Cartersville and you look at this touchdown and you look at this fumble that they make here, you got to give Brandon Lang, number 51, from Cartersville a lot of credit. The defense has played well. It sets up this fire pass. Excellent job from Trevor Lawrence making the play with his legs and his arm. But the defense has been the star for me in the first half for the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. All right, that's a good look at the highlights of the first half. Send it downstairs to Sam Crenshaw with Jess Simpson. Sam, what's up? You got Coach Simpson. You're just coming out from the locker room. Thoughts about what you went over with your team and what you want to do here in the second half? Yeah, just, we got to settle down. We've done some good things. We've stopped ourselves a little bit on offense. We really played pretty good defense for the most part. Um, so we just got to play a little better. Want to see how, how Xavier Gant, we, you think he's going to make it out in the second half? He's, he came out of the locker room. He's warming up. We'll see how he can go. All right, good luck to you. Let's go, Chef Simpson. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Getting ready for the second 24 minutes. There's a look at your first half numbers. 76 total yards for Cartersville with a 10 0 lead, but that's what short fields will do for you. Yeah, and that's what happens anytime we talked about the importance of special teams. Great punt, get it inside the five, turn it around, it's changed this game up. And category number five, turnovers. There's only one number, one tick mark, and it's on the right hand side. The, the big, yeah, the big hit. Well, no question, the big hit, and that was an excellent strip by Brandon Wade to set that up. But to me, one of the keys for this Buford team, they have to be able to throw the ball with some kind of accuracy. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to do something to get this Cartersville front seven off the ball a little bit. And that's going to be a challenge in the second half for Mick Roof and the offense of Buford. Rushing fairly even for Buford. TD Roof had 35. Xavier Gant had 32 before his injury. Martin Mangrum had 24. 15 yards rushing for Cartersville in the first half. There you see Gant. Let's see if he's able to come out for the second half. Well, 11 yards passing is not going to get it done. No. It's not going to get it done for Buford. And they have either they're going to come out and they better start running that ball with efficiency or they're going to have to figure out different ways to be creative to score this game or Cartersville could have an opportunity to put up some, some real points here. Putting the football inside the Quad A championship and special teams big again. Round five starts at the 20 yard line for Buford. Well, now, if you're Buford, you're mm -hmm. going to be who you are. Yeah. Come out, establish the run. They want to run off power. But I'm going to keep an eye on that great scheme I see from Cartersville. They have the defensive end and defensive tackle. They're almost butt to butt, hip to hip. And they're driving through the side that has the tight end mm -hmm. for Buford. That's something to watch. It's been a nice wrinkle for this Purple Hurricanes defense. Heavy formation, power right, motion to the top. Sets a nine. Handoff. Big hole, left guard out to the 31 yard line. Gain of 11, first down. That's big. Martin Mangrum for 11. And this is exactly what we talked about. Don't come out of your defense. You, you, I mean, don't come out of your offense. Stay where you're supposed to be. Running the ball right inside. They're, they're staying in the same things that they've always done. And they're going to try to be Buford, but eventually they're going to have to throw some wrinkles in there if they're going to have a chance to win this game. Once again, that offensive line for Buford, tackle to tackle, 265, 290, 270, 265, 275 to start. And they are trying to create some holes out to the 34 yard line, so a gain of three for Mangrum this time. Brandon Wade is playing a heck of a game right now. Does a great job, number 51, mm -hmm. for Cartersville, striking the block, presses the offensive lineman back, and forms a wall. He used, that time he used the offensive lineman basically as a shield and pushed him into the running back to help make that play. Also went on at 32, Torian Scrutchings. Five on the line for Cartersville, eight, nine in the box. And out to the edge, and an ankle tackle saves probably a touchdown that time. Great work by Kobe Whitfield on the edge to keep Mangrum from going all the way from one end of the field from right to left. What'd you see here? I want you to rewind that back. I want you to look on the right side. Look on the right side here, guys. Right here, this is what I'm talking about. They're going to penetrate inside and force Buford to bounce outside. Brandon Wade again, excellent scheme. That's what that is, well coached team. And here's your ankle tackle by Whitfield to create the situation. Third down and five. 
Power set, three in the pattern. Quick slant complete. Down the seam inside the 50, down to about the 46 yard line. Gain of 17 that time. Brandon Marsh. Nice throw and catch. Excellent job by Mick Roof. Anytime that was a slant pass. That's all about timing. Nice throw. What that does is it gives confidence to the young quarterback. He sets his feet, knows where his target is. He delivers the ball. Excellent job by Mick Roof. Excellent job catching by Brandon Marsh. Tyman Penniman got his hands up and it ended up going through the uprights when he was trying to defend the pass. Had his hands up, yep. went right through him. But that's a nice job by Mick Roof. Power set, hand off once again. Good upsetting at the ankles that time. Joshua Blackwell takes it down to about the 42. So they'll call it five. Second down five. Efficient. Nice job by Buford. Standing there offense. You see Big Shug Frazier. Mount Shug is mm -hmm. in the game on offense now. And when you're looking for power sets, I don't think you can get any more powerful than 315 lined up as a tight end on the right hand side, top of your screen. Backs in the eye. Handoff once again. Power bounce outside. Stopped at the 40. Flag in the pile. Probably coming back. Joshua Blackwell with the carry. In on the tackle. Trey Kramer number one. 34. Tyler Reed. And let's see what Bruce Austin has to say. Uh, I thought I saw a little jersey. Being snatched out there a little bit. We got a hole. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, second down. Seventh penalty of the game for Buford. Now, these are the situations where Mick Roof has to manage the situation. Don't try to get it all back. And if I'm, and if Buford is who they are always, they're still going to have an opportunity to run here. So second and 19, this is where you got to look for screen, draw, some kind of trick play that takes advantage of a fast Cartersville pass rush. Play action winding up going down the seam. Picked up. 45 50 has the edge out of bounds at the 40 yard line. And it looked like Mick Roof was locked into his receiver the entire time. 26 yards on the return. Well, good job by this Purple Hurricane defense. They're in cover two. They have two safeties over the top there. The middle linebacker got deep. And we talked about Mick Roof. You got to manage the situation. So what happens here? There's a guy sitting right there. Xavier Coxum. Yep. Xavier Coxum. That's what happens in cover two. Safety read the quarterback's eyes. Even though he's deep, the two safeties, they were exactly where they needed to be. Heck of a play. Just got to manage the game. We just talked the play before that about Mick Roof. Don't try to get it all back too fast. Be smart about it. The 5'6 junior. Cut in the traffic lane, intercepted the pass, gets it back for 26. First and 10, 38 yard line. Shook Frazier chasing Trevor Lawrence. Released. And complete. Down to the 18, gain of 20. Now they're calling it incomplete, bringing it back. You talk about being under, being under duress. Mm -hmm. Big Shug wins the, up the middle. He's chasing. Nice job throwing the ball still, though. Tony Dean didn't get the foot down. There's Shook Mountain. Nice Shook Frazier. Good to, kid. Heading Good to guy. NC State. Great, great player for NC State to build their defense around. That's what you were talking about earlier. Rushing three, dropping eight. Looks like a blitz off the top. Swing pass. 40, 35 to Kramer, down to the 31. So a gain of seven, third and short. Nice play. Just a basic swing pass. It's like a long handoff. He was going there. That actually wasn't a swing pass. That was a screen. That was a swing screen. You see the offensive tackle released. This offense is really detailed. I mean, it, they got so many wrinkles built in here for, the, for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it's almost unimaginable at high school what he's doing right now. 29% on third down completions today. Lawrence rolling out one more time. Big pressure off the edge. And he is sacked all the way back close to the 45-yard line. TD Roof 
with the big loss for Cartersville. Takes them out of field goal range. Nice job by TD Roof. They, there's, there's a difference between the boundary and the field. Mm -hmm. The boundary is the short side, and the field's the wide side. TD comes from the wide side very smart. Because what's one thing we've talked about? I've watched Trevor Lawrence throw against his natural throwing motion to the left every time. So they go to the wide side. Big Suge wins inside, gets upfield. Good rush. Good rush. Good job by everybody involved. And he's dancing a little bit. Over the back suplex by TD Roof puts it down on the field. Punt. Bounces into the end zone. Almost had the sideways English 40-yard punt. Touchback 20 on the net. So Buford will try it again from their own 20. They escape. Good programming coming up on Georgia Public Broadcasting. If you've been patiently waiting for the return of Sherlock, you're in for a treat New Year's Day night. The Abominable Bride, a 90-minute holiday special coming to GPB. And the episode features a major twist. Set in the 1890s London, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman star, along with many other familiar faces from the regular series. It's a new year and a new Sherlock, The Abominable Bride, premieres New Year's night, January 1st, 9 o'clock on the great GPB. Handoff. Near side escapes the ankle tackle. 34 yard line. Gain of 14 out of the blocks. Christian Turner. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle mm -hmm. by Kobe Whitfield yeah. on the edge there. I mean, that was a shoestring tackle. Great job. I mean, great job getting them down here. There's he Whitfield on the grab yep. and down. It's a nice job. Good tackle. Good run. Officially a gain of 13 back to the 33. Heavy formation for Buford. Handoff. 40 lowering the boom that time. Once again, Christian Turner. We're going to mark him close to the 45, right near Liverpool. Here's Turner. Huge hole that time. We had a lot of folks grabbing. Ends up on his backside at about the 43 and a half. Well, what I see is Cartersville now, they're, you're starting to see a little bit of fatigue. Mm -hmm. Their middle three D-line nose guards, they're submarining going at the knees of Buford's offensive line. Gain of 11. It works that time. Austin Davis, number two, in on the tackle. Nice battle on offensive and defensive lines, and you, you just see the chess match. I'm watching Cartersville looking a little fatigued. What they're doing is they're what they call a submarine technique. They get in their four-point stance, and they try to dive at the knees of the Buford offensive line to stop away the dives, the inside runs. No game. Once again, power set. Backs in the eye, motion up top. Make the toss. Roll out. Austin Davis, number two involved. Darian Polnitz, 41 involved. There's the pressure that you've been talking about. Five up front. Yep. And they bring pressure from the field, the wide side of the field. So they slant to the boundary. You got six guys. See, they're slanting here to the boundary because they're sending a, a blitzer from the field. It's something that here, Buford's going to have to make an adjustment because they've had a lot of success with that here so far. Pullman started 41. Davis finished at number two. Heavy set once again. Third down, 18. Roll around. Quick little screen pass into the traffic. Met by a lot of folks at about the 42. So gain of maybe six. It'll be fourth down off the completion to Brandon Marsh. And Buford's going to have to punt once again. Great defense. Time and penny. I counted 11 guys around the ball. Cartersville's players are flying around the ball. You can see the confidence. I mean, I counted 12, I mean, 11 guys around that ball. If I counted 12, it'd been a penalty, but. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what I want you to notice is, as the play starts finishing, look at all the Carterville, uh, Cartersville defenders. Look at this. Look at it. Look at this. Everybody's here. It's 38 the defenders. Look at them, all of them. 38 defenders. 38 defenders. <laughs> <laughs> and a fair catch on the punt, 38 <laughs> yards. Picked up by Kobe Whitfield deep. 429 for the third. And with Cartersville's offense coming out onto the field, Buford's defense, it's going to be another opportunity for Cartersville to put more points on the board. When we come back, the Purple Hurricanes and Trevor Lawrence try to add to their 10-0 lead. Quad A championship right here on the great GPB. 
Providing safe, affordable, and reliable electricity requires more than bucket trucks and utility poles. These are the faces behind your power. For more than 75 years, Georgia's nonprofit, member owned electric cooperatives have been on a mission to brighten the lives of more than four and a half million Georgians. We are Georgia's EMCs, proudly serving our members, lighting the way. Welcome back, 429 for the third here in the Quad A Championship. Cartersville still up 10 on Buford. And at the beginning of the game, you saw a very large graphic with a lot of small print that talked about what Buford has done. Here's the Cliff Notes version. Last year winning their ninth title in 13 years, chasing after their second four-peat in school history. They would be the first team to do it. They've won seven of the last eight titles. Had a 47-game win streak from 01 to 04. Had a 42-game win streak snapped this year with their loss to McEachern, the only blemish on their scorecard this year. And look at that number since 2000. 222 and 13 in 15 years. And two of those losses forfeits. <laughs> and there's the, there's the graphic we showed you at the beginning. And you see a word on that third column. Champs, 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 champs. You know what I think the best part of that is, though? Mm, that a lot of them have been different classifications. Yes. They're not just winning one classification. They're moving up, kicking butt. This is a heck of an effort by Cartersville if they can pull this out today. Single, double, triple, and quad. Big Shook. Tymon Pennyman gets a couple. <laughs> Shook Mountain right there. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Shook is a good guy, good kid. I get a chance to talk to him periodically and, you know, around when that he's, he's really worked hard to, you know, improve his conditioning and all the things that it takes to be a good good athlete and a good football player and a good, good kid. He's a good guy. And if memory serves year to year, he's down about 10 pounds, isn't he? Oh, yeah, man. Shook is looking a little shoot. Sure. <laughs> Pass complete just on the flip side of the 30, close to a first down. Miller Forrestal. When we talk about Shook Mountain heading to Raleigh, 6 2, 24 7, 3 star. You see the rankings top 50 in both Georgia and nationally when it comes to position and state. Heading to NC State, the Wolfpack are getting a good one. He's been causing all kinds of trouble from the middle tonight and has for the last four years. Third down short. Lawrence checking off. He's got protection up high. Three in the pattern. Hand off. Momentum carries it past the sticks. Pennyman again for the first down. Looking at the surge of the Cartersville offensive line doing a heck of a job. As much as Suge has been causing havoc, this offensive line is battling tooth and nail against one of the best defensive linemen in the state. And they're, Robertson, getting, they're getting after him. Robertson, 245. Mm -hmm. Garrett Cook, 250. Cam getting, Cheek in the middle at 250. They're scrapping. They're getting after Suge. They're not turning it down. Bryce Wilkins at 230. Nick Root at 245. Bad snap. Ball on the floor. Who's got it? Lawrence fell on it, as you saw a bunch of Buford players chasing after it. And because the Buford players were chasing after it, one of them shaken up. Well, it was a big surge that time by Buford. The entire line of scrimmage gets knocked back, as you can see. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, there's that guy, Big Shug, again, creating a new line of scrimmage, knocking them back, as you can see up here. Causing havoc. Good job by everyone on the front, though, all along the board. Both defenses are playing well. Number 20, Jacob Martin, was the last guy in the pile, and he got a helmet to the arm, so he's trying to nurse a stinger right now. Second and 17, down the sidelines, incomplete. But a half step too much for Terrius Callahan, so it'll be third down. Uh, just try to take a shot, throwing a deep route, trying to let your guy make a play. That's what it's about. Sometimes you got to let playmakers make plays. They took a shot then. They're playing with house money right now because they're confident because Buford hadn't shown the ability to have put up any points right now. So if I'm Cartersville, I'm confident in taking some shots, punting it, and coming back and fighting again. And they're also using the running game. Good call. Run Working the, the clock. So let's see what Buford's defense can do here. 207 for the third. Third and 17 for the Kings. Protection up high. Pressure up the middle. Anthony Grant with the sack came in clean. 
Lost back to about the 19 yard line. Loss of seven. Fourth down. Yeah, what happens is simple mathematics didn't want enough people to block. You got five blockers, you got six blitzers. It's going to be a, cha a challenge there. Good job, good scheme by Buford. They just got numbers. They block five. Let's hope six of our guys, one of our six will win. That's what happened. Great ankle tackle, An ankle tackle to grasp from Trevor Lawrence. Fourth down punt doesn't turn over. Wobbler picked up at the 44. 50. Nice ankle tackle to keep it from being a big return. 37 yard punt. Joshua Blackwell brings it into Cartersville territory. It's going to be really interesting. Buford making adjustments here from the standpoint of some of the half rolls. They haven't had success the last three drives. They've used the half rolls to try to throw the ball. McRoof hasn't had much success. Buford's going to run the ball here. I I'd be surprised if they come out and throw. They're still in the game. It's 10 to 0. They, they still have an opportunity. Stay in your offense. Do what you do best. Power set toss. Near side. Strung out. In and out of one tackle. There's Xavier Gant. Tough, uh, tough. I don't know if they're going to give him a yard on that. <laughs> tough sledding Ooh. out there, man. Tough sledding out there for any of the running backs. I mean, this is, uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the, the scheme of the day for me, I, I give a lot of credit right now to what this Cartersville defensive staff has done. I mean, it's, this is a uh, big boy ball where they're to the tight inside. They're stacking it going hip to hip. Now they're to the left with that same defense. Five on the line, seven in the box, going up against the heavy set of Buford. There's a lot of bodies in that first five yards of scrimmage. There it is. Fake, fake, fake. Gets out of trouble, deflected, incomplete. All right, I've counted six half rolls so far in this game. Mm -hmm. Six half rolls have been beat up every time they've been stopped. The adjustment has to be made. They have numbers. What you see, the Purple Hurricanes have, they're stacked up here. They're stacked up on this side right here, guys. They're stacked up. They're stacked up. Nothing's going to come here. Nothing. They have numbers. What's happening is they have six. Buford only has five. So the challenge is it's called a, a reduce look. Mm -hmm. You reduce your linebacker up, bring your defensive end down, and you're just jetting straight up field to reduce half the field. Their opponents, the guy causing havoc on that last play. Buford on third down, 50 50 in the day. Three in the pattern, roll out one more time, screen back the other way, deflected incomplete. Trying to go for Jake Simpson off the reverse screen. And here's the end of the play. The physicality continues. Polnitz again. You think he and Roof are on a first name basis by now? <laughs> I think so. Pump in the air, Wobbler. Fair catch at the 22. 28 yard punt, no return. Kobe Whitfield with the sure hands. And Cartersville comes back under a minute to go in the third. Very dangerous situation right now for Buford. Let me explain why. You've shown no ability today to score points. Mm -hmm. This Cartersville team, they're able to put up seven more points. It's going to be a tough day finishing up here for Buford the way this scheme set up. They, they, I bet you on third downs, have they even completed a, I'm not sure. I'm going to check that out. On third downs, how many first downs uh, this Buford offense has? Not many. Definitely passing. I'll, I'll do the research on that, but they've ran for first downs. They haven't gone for many. There were four for nine on the day. I don't know how many were pass attempts right. to try to convert. They're now four out of nine on third down. Jet sweep coming to the far side. Great pursuit and a flag. As Trey Kramer was trying to go from the top of, from the bottom of the screen to the top. So we'll see what the flag's all about. And TD Roof in on the tackle. Illegal shift on Cartersville, so they'll move it backwards. Buford's going to take the play. There you see Jess Simpson will take the play. And eventually, I think Buford, they're going to have to start taking some chances have also. Illegal because shift on the offense. A penalty will be declined. Second down. Their defense is playing so well also. So both defenses have still got their teams in position to win the game. So if you're Buford, you still got to feel confident. But if you're Cartersville, I mean, if you were to tell Cartersville they would come in here and have a chance to be up 10-0 in the fourth. Take it. 
<laughs> Carver Columbus, the last team to shut Buford out back in 2010. Screen, Kramer, out of the top of 25, 30, first down. He's got space, cuts it back inside, down to the 40-yard line of Buford, flip the field, first down for Cartersville. 39 yards on the pitch and catch to get him out of trouble. Well, great sell by Trevor Lawrence here. Nice screen, it's the middle screen, and now all you see is here is athletic ability and talent. He does it on his own. Nice work. There's Trey Kramer, six foot 165, class of 2017. And it looks like Cartersville's just gonna sit on it, and that'll be 36 minutes. Three quarters in the books in the quad A title game in the battle of one versus two. It's only 10 points apart, but all 10 points belong to Cartersville. Who gets the class quad A title? Is it Cartersville's first since 99 or a four Pete for the Wolves? We'll have the answer when we come back on the great GPB. Plan to attend a two year college, four year university, or go straight into the world of work, the Georgia CTAE Work Based Learning Program teaches students essential career skills through real world experiences and on the job training. Hi, folks, Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville, wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. But if you think that the folks at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville are proud to be supporters of Georgia high school athletics, you got that right! This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. Welcome back. Start of the final 12 minutes for the Quad A Championship. Cartersville leading Buford 10-0. We've shown you the pedigree. We've shown you what Buford has been able to do as a program since 2000. Let's go to the Wayback Machine to 2003. Darius Walker had a big day setting the state record for touchdowns in this game. Buford would win 42 to 13. There's the first touchdown on the board in the first quarter, four minutes in. Kyle Manley with the touchdown pass here. He would have two TDs on the day. They would win 42 13. This would be their 44th straight win at the time. And then they would go on. And you've seen the full screens, you've seen all the work. Jess Simpson's been a part of it as an assistant under Dexter Wood. Dexter Woods starting it, Ed Dudley before him at the Buford program as well. And I know you wanted to shout out to Johnny Soundbite real quick. <laughs> you know, I love Ed Dudley now. This is the best in all he's doing. Good coach, good man. Lawrence scrambling back to the 37 yard line. There's a gain of three. Here's the numbers for Trevor Lawrence. Eight for 18 on the day, 44% passing. And there he is, the number one pro style quarterback as a sophomore. Top QB in Georgia, 15 offers on the table. I imagine that will probably triple by the time it's over with. It's 6'5", 191, and he's got the flow working on the picture there, too. Shug Frazier 
They're going to need him in With the that end. that left wing, we're going to take a look at him on the mm -hmm. sidelines. Could be a big loss for Buford. It is a big loss right now. Flanker screen broken up. It'll be third and seven. Nice job by Buford swarming on that play. Screens. A lot of field to the right side. Mm -hmm. The boundaries to the left, the field is to your right. From the offensive standpoint, high school, a lot of coaches like to get their quarterbacks, particularly great ones like Trevor, in space. So let's see what happens here. Third and seven, Cartersville, 30% on third downs on the day. Three in the pattern up top. Lawrence out in the flat, picked up. Hog tied, two yards short. Pass was complete to Antoine Jefferson. Fourth down. At the 32 it would be a 50 yard field goal, which would be right on the edge of the range for Jonathan Cruz. Interesting decision here by Joey King. Because the rules benefit you if you just get it into the uh, end zone. It comes back to the 20, correct? Or is it short to the 20? Mm -hmm. yep. Fourth so down and three. Offense is going to go for it. Short stack. Look at the power. Power up high. Pennyman strung out. Not going to happen. Great defense by Buford. Stepping up. TD Roof, number one, in on the tackle. And they just string it out here. Nothing happening. Well, good job by Buford along the board, forming a wall. Good job, everybody staying in their position. Defense is about being where you're supposed to be. Just do your job. That's what coaches say. They did their job that time with Buford. So let's see what Buford can do here. Minute and a half into the fourth quarter. Down 10. Power set. Toss. Strung out. Nothing happened. They're going to call. They want to flag at the end of the play. Flag is on the field for the takedown on Christian Turner. The only thing it could be is a face mask, couldn't it? Ivan Nelson, number 30, in on it. Looks like he threw it when he was taking him down to the ground, tackling him when he was making the tackle. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. End of the play. There's the hand. And the wrench, yep. yeah. You always hate to see a good play go bad, mm -hmm. but I'll take that aggressiveness any day of the week. Any day of the week. Be aggressive. If we make a penalty, we'll live the fight again. Moves it inside the 50 to the 47. Play action. Roof thought about it. Almost thought about it too long. Tries to get rid of it. He does. Incomplete. Did he get it? Do they call the interception though? Nope, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Buford's out of rhythm passing wise. I mean, most of those passes, Mick Roof is supposed to take one, two, three, he's fire. A passing offense is about a rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's like music, it's a rhythm. Right. You go one, two, three, throw. And what happens when you're out of that rhythm, you look like you can't dance, right? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can answer yeah. to that one, yes. You got to dance where you're supposed to be dancing as a quarterback. You can't dance and drift and try to freestyle and you know he's not that kind of quarterback. He's got to make the throws that are designed to be made. Number nine throws Fize. Had the ball end up in his hands but was out of bounds so he stayed with Buford incomplete second down ten handoff. A lot of bodies in the middle. A lot of white jerseys gathering around the Buford running game. Once again Christian Turner getting reps. Nelson number 30 does a good job stepping up. This defense, Tyler Reed, they're swarming right now. They're feeling confident. They've, they've eliminated the run from Buford, and Buford hadn't been able to throw. You can't ask for a better day from a defensive standpoint. There's your third down numbers. Buford at 44%, Cartersville at 27%. Let's see what Buford can do here. Swing pass. Looks like that was the first look. He's going downfield, and it is almost intercepted. Trey Kramer had it in and out of his hands. Landed a little funny. But it'll be fourth down again for Buford at 923. You know it's funny when we talked in pregame we talk about one of the most important parts of this game was going to be pass rush mm -hmm. for Buford. 
Well, really, pass rush the, the better way. pass rush is showing up today is Cartersville. I mean, they've hit the quarterback at least 10 times, minimum multiple, and they're affecting him. They're affecting the quarterback. Great coverage, great scheme today by Cartersville. Buford has to figure out what's going on. And look at this. Could be a short punt formation. Well, they could be going for it here. High snap. A lot of confusion thrown deep. In and out of the hands. Incomplete turnover on downs. Look. Great play by Cartersville. But the play, when we're talking about this rhythm of the quarterback, mm -hmm. on that play with Buford, it was already off kilter. You see the, the wide receiver almost runs into the quarterback. Caleb Howard almost runs into the quarterback. There's no rhythm. So what happens is he throws in the double coverage because the, the tempo. Coaches always talk about tempo. He fumbles it. I mean, there's so many different things right now that Buford's struggling with, and you can't fumble the center quarterback snap exchange and things like the, the receivers in motion. The, the, you, you just can't do that. You saw R.J. Walker yeah. almost get hit in the head by the snap. And anytime you see the quarterback pump the ball two, three times, chances are he's not going to make the play. Can't pump the ball and then throw out a rhythm. Because he's thinking. Yep. There's your rhythm right there with Trevor Lawrence. Outside, crossing the 50, so gain of maybe six. Downstairs, update on Shug Frazier, Sam Crenshaw. He just walked down here in front of me here. He's, he, they, they were testing his shoulder, clavicle, left shoulder, left clavicle. He wants to go back in and play so badly, but right now they know how severe the pain is whenever they touch that area uh, and up on his left shoulder. So right now he's sitting there, you see the towel over his head, obviously dejected and frustrated. He wants to get back in there. 844 for regulation. Trevor Lawrence checking off. Defensively, that means that Ennis Claw at 78 would end up playing both ways. Lawrence getting out of pressure. Looks like he's going to get rid of it. And he does. Smart play. Smart play by Trevor. Smart play. Good job by Buford's defense putting pressure on him now. Buford's defense has played a heck of a game today. This is a prolific style. This is a prolific, prolific offense, particularly mm -hmm. in the playoffs and the entire season. Buford's defense is doing a good job, and they're still in the game. The beauty, the beautiful part about this, from their standpoint, we haven't done anything offensively, but we're in the game. Two scores down. Yep. 8:28 to go. There's your Cardinalsville numbers. Third down. Motion to the bottom. Three in the pattern. Almost looked like CFL motion there. Nothing happened. Maybe a yard and a half. So it'll be fourth down and two. Pennyman with the carry. You got the X as a wide receiver. You got the Y as a wide receiver. Those are the letters that you num that you when you're teaching offensive players and mm -hmm. what they're doing. That's called Z mode. Okay. When the Z receiver goes in motion across the center's butt, it's called Z motion. Okay. The tight end goes in motion. That's Y motion. Got it. You got X is X motion. So X mode. You say Y mode, X mode, Z mode. They're doing a good job with that here, but. I mean, right now, Cartersville's in total control of this game. Jonathan Cruz into punt. Don't quite get to it. Let's see if he has the backspin he's had on it before. No fair catch caught at the 15. Tackled immediately by Austin Davis. Special teams are showing up today, just like yesterday. Yep. Here's your tail end. No high hand. So that means your fair game. Austin Davis says, I'll take that. Austin did a good job of securing that ball. A lot of times you see balls squirt out in situations like that. It's big, big, big drive for Buford here. Now you got to think they're running offense. Mm -hmm. You maybe only have two more series in this game until you get to that when you get down to two minutes. So when they get the ball back again, if they go the distance, they're only going to have two, three minutes left. This is important. They have to get some points here. Power set, Model Hall runs right into the middle of it, just crosses the 15 to the 17. Two, maybe three. Tyler Reed came up. A little gimpy, and you see Brandon Wade there, 51. It's my MVP right now, if I had to pick a kid. Makes the big strip on the goal line. He's, he's eliminated the off tackle power plays that Buford's done by just being where he's supposed to be. 6'1", 260 pounder for Joey King. He'll be back next year. Another muddle huddle quick set. 
Motion out. They try the Wooski play. Maybe got a half a yard that time. Jamal Singleton, the ninth grader, getting the handoff there. They're trying to figure it out. And I understand Mick Roof, your first time getting the opportunity here, you're in a big game. You got to figure it out. And that's what they're trying to do. They're coming. That time was, I've never seen that play. You know, that's one. That's out like of the Rhett Lashley Wooski. playbook yeah. at Auburn. Yeah. And with Jess Simpson's yeah. connections back right. to the Plains. Had success with that play this year. Big blitz coming off the edge. Roof trying to get rid of it. He does complete. First down just shy of the 30 to Brandon Marsh. Man, excellent show by Mick, excellent throw by Mick Roof. Gets out of the pocket, really smart. Hadn't had much success on this the entire game. Gets out, avoids a, a defender, throws it. Excellent throw. Wow, nice accuracy. Great job there. That could be one of the biggest plays of the game, converting that third down, because you don't want to punt it here, because what would happen is Cartersville would have ran up at minimum at least two minutes. So great job that time. Could be in one of the plays of the game if Buford's able to come back and, and win this game. Usually if you don't take a timeout and you just run four plays and you max the clock, that'll take two minutes and 20 seconds off of it if you don't get a first down. Buford looking again, inside slant complete, first down, March to the 46. And that's been open all day long, guys, because what, what, when you see what Carterville's doing, when they're stacking that line, they got five, six guys in, near the line of scrimmage. The slant routes are open all day for McRoof. But now you're seeing he's starting to show composure. I like seeing a young quarterback. He hasn't made many plays yet, but guess what? What defines a great quarterback is what you do now. You got to be able to move on quick from the negative plays to make positive plays like he just did. Marked at the 45. Three in the pattern. Blitz off the corner, coming in hard. Pass is complete at the 45. Great wrap-up tackle that time by Kobe Whitfield to make sure that the game was minimal at best, maybe two. He's having a heck of a game, too. Great open field tackling here. I want you guys to watch this. Watch this. He comes up, breaks down, wraps up. Excellent job. Excellent job. Second down, eight, handoff, inside, nothing. There's that dude again, 51. Mm -hmm. Brandon Wade having a heck of a game as the junior. He looks like a little junior Andre Flewellen, former Florida State star, drafted in the third round former by the Kane. Detroit line. Four, yep, yep, yep. Exactly. Short, thick with the wide body. Flew ain't missed many meals now when he's in Cartersville. <laughs> probably over there eating some oxtails and collard greens now. I love you. So Brandon Wade would be the DMVP. The Dr. Rush blitz in off the side. 50, first down, 40. Getting in and out of traffic. Balls on the floor, but picked up. Great pressure and great work from behind. Falling on it, key, Alan Bussoletti. Well, great, great play call by Buford. What's the best defense versus an, uh, a blitzing team? It's screens. Let them come. Let them come. Trey Creamer almost makes one of the plays of the game here. Look at his strip. Oh, nice, nice effort. Mangrum on the reception. Bussoletti coming in from behind. Great drive so far by Mick Roof. Nice snap to the 30. Roof rolls out. Picked up inside the 20. First down, Marsh out of bounds. Down to the 14, gain of 16. I love this pass right here. Mick Roof, he gets the ball out of his hands before the receiver even turns his head around. When we talked about rhythm, that's great rhythm. Now this offense is in the rhythm. Getting the ball in and out of his hands. The quarterback is just there to deliver the ball to the receivers. He did a good job that time. Throw to a spot as opposed to throw to a receiver's there place. Go. Yep. Do what you did in practice. Do what you did in practice. Five completions in a row for Roof. Timeout Cartersville. And we'll take a timeout with him. Time Joey out. King wants to talk to his defense. 421 away from the first, first state title that. Cartersville's had in 16 years. Will they get it? We'll have the answer when we come back. You exercise. You choose the salad occasionally. But staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, is hard on your own. So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24-7. 
Cygnus is there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching. In sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Welcome back, 421. Regulation. And we say that on purpose. They're looking to storm the dome, get their first title. Let's go back to last year. And St. Pius struck early on a fourth down plunge. Everybody cashed in for Buford, and the ankle tackle didn't go. So St. Pius got the first points on the board, but the rest of it was Buford. Austin Shepard, you see him working his way through traffic. He'll go from the left end of the screen to the right. He will score. So Brett Shepard with that play. And then a page out of the back of the playbook. Double pass, Aaron Auer with the catch. And he'll go in the end zone. Buford would win their third title in a row, chasing their fourth title in a row tonight. Once again, they would be the first program to win four in a row twice. Right now, it's Buford and West Rome, the only squads to do it once. And West Rome had three head coaches do it. Buford has only had one with Jess Simpson and then Dexter Wood on the previous run. Inside the marsh, trying to work his way back to the middle of the field. Caught back at the 15, no game. Bubble screen. He got his hands quick, but good job. Now, in this part of the, when you're backed up, you got to remember, you got 11 defenders backed up, all of them within 12 yards. It's going to be hard to throw screens because the defensive backs, they're not going to go into the end zone. That's just part of it. They're going to have to figure out a way to get the ball in the end zone some kind of way with 11 guys trying to make a play. 63 yards passing on this drive. He only had 39 through three quarters. Down the middle field. Stepping in the passing lane, Tyler Reed at the 340 mark. Well, we just talked about the exact scenario that caused this interception. Anytime you're reduced back towards the red zone, as you see here, they rush four. They have seven in coverage. So now you got seven guys for three receivers. It's going to be tough to make. Good job when you're reduced back. That's why the red zone offense is one of the most important aspects the vision of a quarterback. Give credit to the Purple Hurricanes making a play. Locked in on Brandon Marsh the entire yep. time. Another Buford turnover. Their third, there's Tyler Reed. Interest with the folks from the flats. Let's see what happens out of a shotgun. I've always thought that was dangerous, handing off in a shotgun situation when you're that backed up. Kramer gets it out to about the four. Well, it is dangerous, particularly when we've seen a few bobbled snaps today. Work that time. And we're going to take another break. 326 to come go out. regulation. Cartersville at their back under their goalposts. Can they the get half. out of trouble? We'll find The GHSA championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more, Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally, but staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, is hard on your own. So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24 seven. Cigna's there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching. In sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way, Cigna. Debt-free education, high wages, and flexible schedules all lie within Georgia's rapidly growing skilled trade industries. Take the first step in establishing your career by visiting GoBuildGeorgia.com.
Welcome back. 326 to go regulation. Buford needs two scores in that time frame. If they are going to four Pete, then those fans are 326 away from getting their Christmas wish a little early. Trevor Lawrence, second down and eight from his own four. Handoff, not taking any risks really. In his Claude, 78 in on the tackle. Kramer up the middle, maybe a yard. Time out. Buford. And Buford their uses their time first out the time half. out. Now this is where the chess match comes in. You got it. What you're going to? You're trying to force this punt, and you mm -hmm. know you got to score. You've had success. Mick Roof had a great drive last time. When you look at it from Buford's side, and if you are Cartersville, just run it again, punt the ball, and uh -huh. play defense. It's the, the game is yours to lose. The game is yours to lose. Here's how Cartersville got to this moment in time. There's a lot of W's on that right hand side. Non-region schedule included Cass, the rival in Cartersville. Tough game playing North Cobb, North Paulding, and then a lot of single digits given up on defense the rest of the way after week two. Going through Lafayette and Pickens to win the region title, putting 42 up on Columbia, 28 on Liberty County. Jonesboro beating Bainbridge. 321 away from a title. Lawrence looking, wide pass over the top. First down and out of bounds. Great touch. Trey Kramer coming up a little gimpy, but here's another look. Joey King has ice in his veins. <laughs> the head coach, <laughs> what a play call here on the swing pass, sets up. They were faking the, the, the screen, the bubble screen. They sent a swing, they sent the running back outside. He has ice in his veins. Coach, I like it. You don't come to just play. You come to play to win. I love it. Out to the 20, first down. Gets three. Because I'm kind of conservative, Nelly. I would have probably ran it, but you know what? That's the difference between a lot of people when it comes to come out. You're you this is this is he. They're desperate. The last yard. Let's come be out. honest. This is the a team that has kicked your butt. They want it bad. This is the bully that came on the block and took your lunch money every day. So what do you do the first <laughs> time you come back from a karate class? <laughs> you pop him in the nose, yeah. right? Yeah. You remember Debo? You ever seen Friday with Ice Cube when they finally stood up? I, rec they got, I recognize the movie, yes, sir. They're tired of getting their bikes taken in Cartersville, okay? <laughs> That's what happens when you finally stand up to a bully. We give the other team a lot of credit. I mean, this Buford defense is playing mm -hmm. phenomenal. This is the best team that Cartersville's faced. Remember, this Cartersville offense has scored over 20, what, the least, the lowest amount of points they've ever scored, I think, is 28 this year. Mm -hmm. And for Buford to hold them to 10, I mean, a credit to them, but even more credit to this Cartersville defense, starting with the front. I mean, they've, they've eliminated what Buford does best, off-power tackle, big boy ball, which has been their Achilles heel the last couple times they've played. And these coaching staffs have histories that go back to their education at Carson Newman, playing for that squad, and head coach Ken Sparks. So they all know each other. Great surge there, makes it third down and short. Let's see where they spot it, up close to the 30. Now the defenders right now were just told by their coach, Coach Simpson, you got to rip it out, rip and strip, you got to do whatever you can. But in these situations, from a player standpoint, one thing that you don't want to do, guys start just trying to rip, and next thing you know, you give up a super long run. But you got to you got to go for it. You got to try to do whatever you can to salvage this season. You got to get the ball back and try to score and get an onside kick. Remember your fundamentals, but at the same time, be aggressive, and that's a big balance. Thank you, Coach. Exactly, you're exactly right. Nice tech, Dr. Rush. Lawrence keeping the first down. Second time, Trevor Lawrence has kept the ball today, and there's the smile on the face. He just pumped him up. It's the first time I've seen him pump it up, throw his hands in the air. Cartersville faithful. I mean, it's loud in here. They are ecstatic about what's happening right now. What a game by both teams, though. Great competition. 
I 75 heading up to exit 280. You're going to see a lot of purple heading northbound. Under two minutes to go from smiles in their faces, first title in 16 years. Penniman again gets maybe three. So all it is is running the football for the Purple Hurricanes. Trevor Lawrence had on the job training last year as a freshman at quarterback. His big 6'5 target at tight end Miller Forrestal had the job before him. And as you said, one of the most unselfish things a player can do is give up his job for another. And that's what Forrestal did for Lawrence. He's going to hang on to it one more time. Is he going to hit the turf and slide in bounds? It's out of bounds. He didn't stay in. Doesn't matter. I'd rather him run out of bounds. He's the number one quarterback in the state. <laughs> run out of bounds on it at that point. If he would have slid, they were going to dive and take a shot at him. That's, I mean, that's how it goes. The game's over for the most part, unless a miracle happens for Buford. But give him a lot of credit. There hasn't been a dynasty like Buford that I've ever seen in Georgia football, arguably in sports history in our state when it comes to high school athletics. Give him a lot of credit. The they'll, be, they'll be okay. The they, word is that Buford has played more in the, uh, in the dome mm -hmm. this year or in recent years past more than the Falcons or Alabama has. <laughs> there's, there's the line that you can use. <laughs> yep. And I can tell you this. We'll be seeing Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Two more years. We'll see, be seeing Trevor Lawrence in this Purple Hurricane program here probably at least a couple more times. Kids, fantastic, fantastic defense. Congratulations out to the entire Cartersville community on this huge victory. Mike Earwood on a fourth down and two under 50 seconds. Mike Earwood, head coach for the title that won it in 91. The 99ers, we talked about them with Ronnie Brown under Frank Barton. That was a bad joker there now. And that man and his squad, 30 <laughs> seconds away. I'll take the penalty. I'll call a timeout, one of the two. It's a really great story. Though. Come out. I mean, Cartersville, that's their second the charge time out of the half. Really think about it, the unselfishness for yes, the team, and it exactly. benefits both players. Yep. You end up getting one of the top tight end receiver hybrid in the, in America, and then you end up getting a quarterback that really will change the dynamics of your, your program and motivate every kid in Cartersville. They're all going to be Trevor Lawrence one day. And so I, I, was, I totally understand the, the magnitude of what Joey King and his program have done, particularly here on GPB TV. September 3rd, 2010, the last time Buford has been shut out, losing to Del McGee and Carver Columbus. And all the Columbia Blue had to do was put two scores on the board to win 14 0. Jonathan Cruz into punt. This is crucial. Gets it away. Wobbler, no fair catch at the 27, dropped at the 31. Joshua Blackwell with the catch, a couple of yards to take the net down, and 16 seconds away. Sixteen seconds away from keeping Buford to be the first school in state history to win two sets of four. Buford and West Rome have done it once. If Buford won today, they would have been atop the mountain in four peaks. Dropping back, trying to go down the seam. Picked up. Pride all up and down I-75. The Purple Hurricanes, and here's Joey King's reaction on the play. <laughs> awesome. I'll never forget when we won in 84. Uh -huh. 
I mean, it was we struggled for years on my high school team to win the state championship at Clark Central. I mean, there's no feeling better than these kids are feeling right now. They have butterflies. They don't even really know what to do. It's just an unbelievable feeling when you get a chance, because I've had a chance to play in a state championship game. But to win it, I've also lost two of them, too, now. But to win one is something special. So go through what Buford's going through right now. Well, they're going through, you know, they're down. But I can just tell you this. The kind of kids that they are, they played hard, they competed. They won't cry over it. They'll be fine. Cartersville, a dominant defensive effort. Joey King, in two years, brings Cartersville a state championship. Bonus is start kicking it now. <laughs> ching ching. <laughs> oh man. Handshakes going. Tremendous defensive effort by Cartersville today. Buford defensively. Just a good effort. They Put did a good job. Put a clamp down. They did a good job. On Trevor Lawrence in that offense. your handshakes we'll have the trophy presentations in just a sec with Mark Harmon down on the field and there he is Trevor Lawrence will see him for two more years after tonight and Dr. Rush I think D is also the word for the day D for defense D for dominant for Cartersville. Yeah, and it starts out with the scheme. Last year, Cartersville, when they went against this Buford team, mm -hmm. they got destroyed off the tackles with the run. This year, they did a reduced look, put two defenders in the middle of the lane that they had problems with last year. They made an adjustment, and their defense helped them win the championship today. And they made Buford's offense think, and it got them out of character and having to fight from behind a place they really haven't been a whole lot. Well, you're exactly right, and one thing that – all defensive coordinators want to do you want to take away what they do best they took away the run forced them to throw that was a recipe for success for this Cartersville Purple Hurricanes championship because we saw for Cartersville five guys on the line of scrimmage matching tackle to tackle sometimes right. being out a little wide you'd see seven you'd see eight you'd see sometimes the blitzer to make nine guys in that first two or three yards where the line of scrimmage is. They were putting a lot of pressure on Buford offensively all day. Well, and, you know, and also not making excuses. This is a younger Buford team. Mm -hmm. So what they ended up happening here, you make the right adjustments when you're Cartersville, and they came up with a scheme that Buford couldn't adjust to. Adjust to so it's just part of the deal. Buford getting their runner-up trophy. And that is something that they are definitely not used to getting. But once again, you think about what Buford has done since the year 2000. They've been champions a lot. And they have done tremendous things in single A, double A, triple A, and quad A. And if memory serves, they're going up to 5A next go round. So they're going to do their, do their work in 5A to go to a fifth classification as the program has continued to grow and evolve. Well, they'll be fine, and I think they'll have a chance to, you know, do damage at any classification mm -hmm. but today it's all about Cartersville and what they were to able to accomplish I mean a tremendous effort by the entire program and they came at you in waves it wasn't just Lawrence and Forrestal as we thought it would be to focus on 6-5 quarterback 6-5 target it would be guys like Kramer and you'd have all of these different guys making their impacts for Cartersville as they won the title today and you're exactly right and the one name that we talked about was Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. number one quarterback in the state he was efficient Made a few plays, but in the end, you saw him making the kind of plays that help you win, getting the ball out of his hand, doing those kind of things. I mean, Trevor Lawrence in the offense, they did just enough to win this game. It's been fun, partner. Always, man. I appreciate you, Nelly. We'll send it downstairs to Mark Harmon for the trophy presentation in Quad A. Oh, we did it. Time now to present the 4A state championship for 2015. And for the first time in 16 years, a Purple Hurricane has hit the dome. And for that, I turn it over to the executive director of the GHSA, Gary Phillips.
Coach, it's a great year on behalf of the entire association. I want to present the trophy to you in just a second. We want to congratulate you on a great season, a great performance tonight. You gave everybody a big thrill, and we uh, congratulate you and your players on their efforts the entire season. Congratulations. And for our trophy presentation from Georgia Farm Bureau. Coach King, I'd like to present to you the state championship trophy. Congratulations Thank from you, Georgia Farm Bureau. Congratulations. Coach King, you made it to the semifinals last year in your second year. You win the state championship. Talk about this team of yours this year. A picture perfect, 15 and 0. First and foremost, all glory and honor goes to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The next thing is these guys, they fought, they fought their tails off all year for each other. They continue to do that tonight, Coach Simpson and his team. That's a classic hard-fought football game right there. And we got the best fans in the state of Georgia. All right, stay right there, Coach. Miller Forrestal, you scored the lone touchdown of the game today. Talk about what this means to you and the fellow seniors. I mean, this is a huge accomplishment for our senior class. We just want to give all the glory to God because without him, we wouldn't be here. I mean, this team, we love each other. We wouldn't be here without them. So, go Canes. Trevor Lawrence, the guy at the controls, just a sophomore. But talk about what this means to you to help your seniors go out on top. Oh, it means a lot. People have been doubting us all year, and I love this team. And I don't think anybody deserves it more than us. It's a very physical game. How tough was it out there? Both defenses really pounding helmets. Oh, it was tough. They hit hard. We do too. But uh, I think we just had the better team this year. We came out on top. Toby Whitfield, tell me what it means to you to win this state championship. It's crazy. I mean, it doesn't even feel real right now. Look over there at all that purple. At all that purple. Tell me what that means. I mean, this community means a lot. I mean, they've been behind us for 15 games straight, home or away. And I just thank God for this opportunity. All right, let's talk to Coach King one more time. Coach, it's a very big day. 1991, 1999, 2015. It's going to be a hot time in Cartersville tonight. Yes, sir, absolutely. Absolutely. Go Canes, baby. Number one. Yes, sir. You know, you guys go undefeated. You were ranked number one all season long. So you had that pressure on your back. You knocked off the defending champ. There's really no doubt. You took on all comers and you proved which team in 2015 was the best team in class 4A. I sure am proud of these guys. They fought week in and week out with a target on their back. They held together and fought even when nobody thought we might, might have pulled it out. They sure did a great job. Well, listen, congratulations. One more shout out to your fans out there. Kane's Nation, nice stand up! All right, the 2015 championship goes to the Purple Hurricanes of Cartersville. Congratulations. And now let's send it over to Jackie Britton and our GPB tailgate party.